Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Sunfall Cycle. Oh my goodness, I tried to trap them, but they all shut up before I could get them. It almost worked. It, it almost, almost worked, except I Everybody went... knows how Bronze feels about Berkeley now. <laughs> yeah, as I'm like saying my address, you're like, and we're live. <laughs> I live at one, two, <laughs> And live. Yeah. Like, here's a photo of my home and exact a map how to get there. And live. And we're good. Yep. I always thought my full name <laughs> was always kind of funny because it rhymes. <laughs> I've always, it rhymes with my social security yeah. number. <laughs> Look how crazy my social security number is. Just like, and live. And we're good. Look how funny my driver's license <laughs> photo is. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Sunfall Cycle. Uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey the Giraffe. Yo. You're back. You're here. Yay. And you're, and Yay. you're, and, and you're sick. You're, you're ill. Yeah. I got a flu, so there'll be some coughs and sniffles. I apologize. Oh man. Can I ask can I ask you a question? Because I've only yeah, ever yeah. seen this in hacker movies. Yeah. Does your hoodie up protect you from the cold? Or uh like look, right now I can deal with a cough, I can deal with the sniffles, but do I need the government reading my mind at the same time? The answer is no. Not right. All right, now. okay. As long as we're we're on the same page. We get each other. Good yeah. good to know. All right. Is it well, lined with tinfoil? Because otherwise it won't work. What's the point of a hood if it's not lined with tinfoil? Like, why would you even do that? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. protect me from rain. Okay. Tinfoil uh, is water resistant. <laughs> oh, that's my that's my favorite. Like, got a stink eye. It. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's something uh, only in a movie someone does. Like, nobody, when you try to like, look closer, nobody tilts their head back and forward at the same time. But you'll notice in a movie, the eccentric <laughs> character will be like, Well, that's just the plan, isn't it? <laughs> You're really good at that, Jeff. I'm good at being a creepy weird guy. Thank you. No. Eccentric <laughs> Basically, Jeff Robbins. Every JRPG villain ever. <laughs> there's, there's cat ladies. I'm going to be the bulldog boy, and they'll be like, Oh, yeah. You can hear them all breathing at night. <laughs> so today for the stream, we I'm, I'm trying something a little different. I noticed that uh, I haven't really been using tags in the past. So nice. today we're using tags. So we're tabletop RPGs. So of course we got the RPG tag. And then because we're a persistent campaign, I persistent campaign tag. This is very helpful. Nice. Nice. Then I noticed they had roll carry, and I was like, well, clearly we're carrying each other, so that's that's going to be there. And yeah. then because we're all talking, auditory ASMR is what we are. And then nice. because, you know, we're dodging there. violence, contemporary dance. Mm -hmm. So those are the tags know. that we are now under. I like to thank Twitch for providing me with what will be my new joy every time i stream coming up with tags that are not related thanks gang uh <laughs> chat please welcome me in thanking jesse for applying these tags to our stream today. we're all that's not here. grading enough you have Thank to crinkle you. random Wait, things into oh. the mic yeah. that's like actually all pleasant <laughs> very exciting to hear what's going to happen today on the sunfall cycle you know what i, I never got really can't wait ASMR is so weird because like I like the con like sometimes a couple times in my life I've had a tough time going to sleep so I turn on like a sound of a gurgling brook or a rain yeah rain is and great I, mm. but if, if I had a person sitting there playing that sound I would be uncomfortable because I'm like maybe that's just the entertainer in, in me or whatever but I'd be like I need to this person needs my attention or something but it's like no mm -hmm. Literally, just fucking grab your ball of gelatin and just finger it for an hour and a half, and I'm just gonna sleep to that. It's like I don't, I don't get it. No, I don't get it either. I literally the best have an app on my phone. Is Bob Ross, by far, yeah. the sound of like the paint, it was like the brush against the canvas and stuff. Oh, I pass out every time. Like, and that's really great, but if Bob Ross were to like be painting his bare feet on camera, that would be better <laughs> for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that's what ASMR is. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Sexy, mesmerizing recordings. <laughs> Why would you defile Bob Ross? Like Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, enough of this garbage. Steven, <laughs> take it away. Get out, Save us from ourselves. 
Oh man, Jesse, that's a bigger job than I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, welcome back to wait. Welcome back to week. What nice, week is it? Nice. Is it week seven or is it week eight? eight right? I think it's week eight. Welcome back to week eight of the Sunfall Cycle. Today, first, we're going to start off with the summary of what happened last time. Who's going to take it away? Uh, man, I guess I'll do it. Yes. I don't want to give Totem Pole the credit he deserves, but last time we uh, discovered that our dear pal Totem Pole was back. And uh, none of us were happy to see Totem Pole. It wasn't a friendly reunion. None of us, none of us were happy to see Totem Pole. And uh, we were going to figure out a way. I think the, the main plan was, okay, we've opened the portcullis now. What, what are we going to do? Now that we've, we've gotten through, what is our, what is our strategy? How, where are we going to proceed? Are we going to move forward boldly into the future? No, is what we said. Instead, <laughs> we decided to go back to that damn blob because there were scroll casings and potions and all sorts of things down there. We said to ourselves, by God, let's figure this one out. So we went back, and like good gamers, we threw everything we could at the blob. The blob was very hungry, so we gave it rope and all sorts of stuff. And the blob was like, well, I don't want rope. I have rope. So we were like, ah, cool. Cool. Great, glad we learned that. And then um, we ended up deciding to feed it. We fed it something before the oil, right? Or did we just feed it the oil? I can't remember because we got the, we got something before we got the scroll, or we got we the did. scroll. I can't remember what it was. We got the lantern. Yeah. And or was the lantern? No, the lantern. Did you the lantern? Last. I think you picked lantern. up the lantern at the end. I think yeah. the scroll was the first thing you got. Well, all right. Well, whatever the case may be. We managed to uh, go all the way back up, get oil, because we were like, yeah, let's go feed it oil, because that makes sense. And No, you wanted something heavy. Heavy. It's just a barrel of oil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, yeah. It, we're in a castle made of stone. We gave it a barrel <laughs> of oil. Uh, <laughs> and so we, we rolled this oil. Well, actually, we lowered it with our rope mm -hmm. that we had, and after we brought it back down. Using a spell to like ease its descent. That's right, Brit. Yes, like, I cast rocked it out. Angle. Yeah, and it turns out, all the times we fought and all the people we had to fight on the way to make this happen, Totem Pole actually helped. It was very reassuring that you know we had someone who had our back, Jeff. Then we <laughs> we ended up going back down, getting the scroll. Brit realized it was a scroll that you that she could use. Mm hmm. And immediately set the barrel of oil on fire and blew up the slime. Uh -huh. And then a slime fight broke out <laughs> in which we, we fought and killed the slime. But in the process, lost, we lost all the good stuff that we could have got, but we did get a lantern. We got a lantern and, that, and, and a scroll case with a magic scroll that is like a super fireball. I don't remember what the spell was, but it's like Mega Fire 64. And Didn't so, the rope for some reason survive as well? <laughs> Yes, the, yeah. ro <laughs> the rope and the lantern survived. All the potions and all the useful things immediately were gone. They all yeah. died. Yeah. Um, and then we uh, found another tier. And so now we are. We only have two more tiers left before another level up. And uh, the adventure. One tier? You have one tier until you level up. One. Oh! It's too real. Okay, yeah. Level three is a big deal. I'm, I'm excited. excited. All right, yeah. So, uh, and then we go to uh, wherever the hell we go to now. We went back to Saloon up on the moon. I don't think you went back at the end of last session. I think we ended last session with y'all in the pit chamber. You had killed the slime, the blood ooze. You'd gotten the rope, the lantern, and the scroll case. You burnt up the scroll of flaming sphere, setting the barrel of oil on fire. Um, and then... Like you were down here and you noticed that this uh, glass pane on the wall looked semi-translucent. That's right. I, oh, I, the obsidian, okay. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, like Kairos is standing there looking like hands on his hips and he's like, wow, guys, that was, um, that was, a, really, that was a really good job. You know, if I can just say one thing, it's that you all are the most important. And then he just...
And then Armoros is there. I'm looking at the mirror. Yeah, what you see is, is it's not a mirror, but um, down in that blood ooze pit, you know, there was that slimy hole that you had to climb, crawl down in order to get into the blood ooze area. And then at the back of the blood ooze pit, there's like this broken ceiling that leads up into another guard like um, bed chamber area. And on, uh, I think the left wall, let me double check for you specifically. Hmm. Ooze pits. Yes. Um, yeah, on the western wall, there's a large flat obsidian panel that rests flush with the wall. It's roughly the size of a large door. It's smooth and featureless, but there's a strange depth to the color of the glass. It's almost slightly translucent, and you think you can barely make out like faint shapes through the glass, like maybe a room or a hallway. It's pretty hard to tell. Do, do I, I have Eldritch Sight. Do I detect magic at all? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, this okay. door, window, panel is definitely magical. Are, are none of us, like, phased by the fact that Armorous has just, like, reappeared again? Are we uh, all just used to this now? Sark I'd probably give him a hug. I'd probably be like, oh, thank God. Yeah, no, Sark, it, like... It's trying to be tough, but there's like a single, one single tear for Totem Pole. Because, like, we had something last time. There was we there was a friendship blossoming there. <laughs> you told a tale from your past last time, didn't you, Sarek? I did. Yeah, yeah. Do you say anything on your return, Jeff? Um, he just kind of goes, huh. <laughs> Kind of like looks around. It's all very confusing. Where were you? I believe I was up in that moon place. Mm. Wait, oh. just like sitting around? Just resting? She wouldn't stop talking. Oh, God. All right, never mind. There's no rest there. Glad to be back. I'm glad to have you back. Yeah. We yes. missed your strength. It's great to have you. You look creepy with the mask on, though, but it's <laughs> like a fat, set baby bronze mask. <laughs> yeah. He's like, the enemies will find it even more creepy. I think that's a good thing. You're probably right. <clears throat> so, this magical. Yeah, should we check it out? What? Where do you... Do we know where it leads? Do we know how to get back? Do we know anything about this? <laughs> I know it's magic. <laughs> Steven, can I, uh, what is that, like investigator perception or? Yeah, what are you trying to discover? Role? In I'm what manner to... are you investigating or I'm interacting? trying to figure out what it is. So I guess I walk up to it and like, uh, I don't touch it yet. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Like, okay to touch. Um, and sort of try and figure out what it is without touching it first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you like, smelling or like i guess i'm looking at it trying to i guess i'm smelling because i'm standing next to it but i'm mainly trying mm -hmm. to like look at it and see if i can see any indication of what the material actually is if i touched it like if it's soft or hard <laughs> easy broken or whatever yeah and i guess you're like feeling for any like um like Drafts of air, that sort of yeah, thing. That makes yeah, sense. okay. Uh, roll a perception test for me. Is that you just right there? That eight, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, no. Dang, that's amazing that's, that I rolled that low. That's you rolled a three, that's incredible. Well that's done, <laughs> yeah, well. okay. Um, the, the, uh, it, you know, it looks like glass. It looks hard. All right. I touch it. Well, yeah. I'm... Okay. <laughs> I just like push on it a little bit. You, you put your hand on this flat black glass and it's cold to the touch. And as you push, nothing happens. Hmm. Can I, can I perception this? Yeah, totally. 
I want. There's got to be. This has to exist for a reason, right? I well, we can like see things going on on the other side, like shadows. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know I do it. Pushing on the wall. I am not pushing with you. We're both <laughs> pushing nice. this. Like this has to work. This is stupid. What's going on? <laughs> Someone's gonna roll like an eleven, and I'll be like, "There's a uh, there's letters on one side. This they spell P U L L." Yeah, yeah, like you know, both of you are pushing on this thing. Um, it's incredibly sturdy. Like it, it, it feels it, there's no give to it at all. It doesn't feel like it's hinged or like there's no spring or it's it's not like it's not. J- shuddering the way like a door does when you sort of jiggle it or whatever. It feels like it's just a flat piece of glass attached to the wall. Um, who has light? It's very dark in here. I do. Uh, I also have the lantern as well. Yeah. Yeah, so you lit the lantern? Uh, yeah, the minute I used my, uh, my bag, my Dungeoneer's pack to light the lantern, so I've got that. Cool, awesome. Steven, do the shadows on the other side look like they're close to it or like further away or? Um, you know, like you sort of like you're you're looking at it. You, you rolled an eight perception, right? So like you're like, oh, and then like over here and then like you get really close. You get you get really close. <laughs> <laughs> sort of back away. <laughs> but I don't see anything in here. <laughs> <laughs> um. The shadows on the other other side, um, they have this weird way of playing with distance where like depending on the angle that you're looking at, it looks alternately like like there's sort of like a small chamber on the other side and then like a long hallway and like um, you can't see clearly at all. All the, the, the most you can see is sort of like an amber colored, like dark, shadowy, ripply, you know, vague. And hint. we don't we don't see ourselves in this mirror. I mean you see it's not a mirror, right? It's 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 a pl- flat black pane of glass. Um, and it is bolted to the wall? You don't see any fastenings. So um, just... You do see your reflections on the surface of the glass, but it, it's not like a mirror. It's not. But it's intended. like leaning on the wall then, or is it attached to the wall in some fashion? Uh, are you like putting your eye like around the side to like peer at the attachment? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's flush with the stone. So it's not, it's not leaning or like, you know, placed there. It's like it's a part of the wall. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we need a password. Like, uh, you know, like the word for friend or something. I don't know. The word for friend is just friend. <laughs> but like in a different language or something. I don't... <sighs> Armoros, can you warp in there? You warp a lot. Can you warp inside? <laughs> it just kind of happens to me. I don't do it. Mm. I wonder if we can break it. We could try to break it. I, so, I feel somehow doubt that we could break it. Almeros could try to break it. Almeros is pretty strong. Very strong. <laughs> if you want me to, I can try. I think you should. Okay. Steven, do you want me to roll strength or does, does it even matter? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think you should roll an athletics check. I mean, like, what are you using to try to break this thing? It is himself. <laughs> are you yeah. just punching the mirror? He, like, feels around it, I guess, and sees if there's, like, a pressing point, and then he just starts to kind of punch it a little bit, yeah. Sarah's yeah. going to, like, yeah. back off quite a ways. Just, like... So, yeah. yeah, where where are each of you in this in this equation? Who's uh, next to Armoros? I think we just make room for him to try and yeah, it. yeah, I'm like yeah, standing yeah. behind him, make like room. gazing to see. Like I'm like checking for like <laughs> any kind of runes or so I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna be watching to see if if there's like any reaction to its punch. I don't expect the punch to work. I just want to see if there's a equal and opposite reaction. All right, cool. I'm I'm putting Jesse all the way on the other side of the room, and you two are like peering over Armors' shoulder. Um, Aya, are you like trying? You're trying to like analyze this thing from a magical perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. You're trying to see if there's any reaction to him hitting mm-hmm. it, or if there are any runes that appear or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so while Armoros is like punching at this thing, and you've got like you're wearing chainmail, right, Armoros? Uh, I believe so. 
So like you've got gauntlets or something, something yeah. covering your hands. It's not super, it's not hard like plate, but your your hands are protected from the impact against the glass. Aya, would you roll an uh, Arcana check for me? Yeah, okay. Um, Armros, you start punching this thing and um, like you can, you can see the surface of the glass starting to like chip off and and like small hairline fractures start appearing inside the thickness of this glass. As you start sort of like doing some damage to the surface, you can tell it's actually far thicker than you had originally thought. Like the, the hairline fractures are only on the surface. They're not even penetrating all the way through the, the thickness of the glass. Um, Aya, as, as you can, as you see this, like describe for me the way that you're like gathering magical and arcane information from from the atmosphere the environment around you yeah so um as i'm peering over his shoulder i'm trying to see if the shapes on the other side of the glass are reacting at all i'm trying to see if the mirror itself is like almost reacting if it's if it's trying you know attempting if they like if there's like any kind of like pulse or I feel like get a feeling from it that it's like trying to keep us out or maybe it's like just wanting us to gaze in yeah. um I'd also ask uh uh Sarek to like hold the lantern aloft because I I don't have any kind of dark vision and I'd also look around like the perimeter of the glass to see if there's anything that's like etched into the wall there I have mm -hmm. my flame too so I can just walk around with you Okay. Yeah. So like Sark's all the way on the other side of the room with his lantern. <laughs> but uh, I'm like, there's a like, nice glow. Uh, and I'm like, I got it. There's a nice glow. If you're curious what's behind you, you can turn back and look. There it's very well lit. Yeah. So uh and Kara, you're walking around with like your produce flame in your hand while while Aya is looking. Um Aya, every time um Armrose punches his fist into the glass, you see um the briefest flash of runes inside the glass but like on the edges of it where it uh, like attaches to the wall mm -hmm. um so like all of this like punching and examining and like holding the flame up takes about 10 minutes 10 minutes 10 10 10 minutes uh and at the end of it um armoros you're breathing heavily um you haven't made much progress and then you see um whoops that's not what i want there, you, you actually see uh, some of those cracks that you've made start sealing themselves up and the glass smoothing itself back over. That's when I stop punching it. I go. Yep. Um, and Aya, you, you are like the magic that's at work here is, is fairly complex. Um, it definitely looks like this is set up to keep you out or keep something else in. Mm -hmm. Like it's set up to be intentionally impassable okay yeah um every every once in a while uh as as these um runes flash you think you see um sort of a detail in the spell around the outside mm -hmm. that suggests to you that there may be ways of getting past it yeah but you're not sure what like it looks like there's something built into the spell okay there's no use, Armoros. I believe we need a more magical rather than physical solution. Agreed. And I'm going to pull the, the dagger I took from the boss out of my bag and be like, anybody think that this might have anything to do with it? Uh, Sarek's way in the back like, you can try. <laughs> Eh, yeah, you're right. I can, and I like take the dagger and like. Pink and just touch the surface of the glass. Just, like, very gently, like stealthily, quietly, just like touching the surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you feel like a thrum in the dagger as it touches the surface of the glass, more so than just like metal touching glass, like you know. 
we've all done that. Everybody's like, you know, everybody mm-hmm. has like put a knife against a mirror in their lives. It, you know, it feels like that, but also then like the knife just sort of like vibrates, uh, like as if it was a tuning fork, like you had struck mm-hmm. something is ringing in your mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the stupidest thing I've ever, everyone's stuck a knife to a mirror at one point in their life. Do it every day. I do it every day. Who Stand are you? You're the weird like, one here. And I say I one of these days. Here. What are you doing? <laughs> Stop looking at me. <laughs> one of these days I'll have the guts. <laughs> that was dark. I'm, I'm sorry. I have really dark. dark side Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> Stab that mirror. Stab <laughs> that mirror. <clears throat> From hell's heart you stab at thee. Right at that mirror. I'm going to turn around and right let everybody know and be like, well, that definitely felt unique. Like good unique or not again unique? It's like when you put the opposite ends of a magnet of two magnets together. Okay, so you're going to try again? What? You do it. All right. Sark like walks up with his hand out, like, "Give me the knife." Mm-hmm. I place it in his hand and then take a few steps back. <laughs> Just give it a good old one-two. Oh, I stab that! I stab that damn thing as hard as I can. <laughs> So you just walk up to this this obsidian glass and just stab it with just the stab fang it. of the haka. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the 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 knife just goes just punches straight into the mirror and like a fountain of blood just explodes out of the mirror all over you. Uh, but then as it's as it's like erupting through the air, it quickly congeals and turns into like lashing black tentacles that whip and scythe in all directions. Uh, anyone within 15 feet of the mirror, which if I judge correctly, is going to be Ankara, Armoros, and uh, Sarek. I need you to make a DC 14 <laughs> a dexterity saving throw. Oh, God. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Nice. My pass. Nice. Nice. All right. Good. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, you you each take three poison damage. Hmm. Uh, and and as this happens, the the four of you hear like very distant booms and cracks, you know, sort of in the distance. That was unpleasant. Does any of uh, us like remind any of us of anything or me? Like, do I know anything about obsidian? Yeah, do we actually, do we actually <laughs> open the <laughs> gateway? Yeah, as, as like your, this this effect it was both um, physical and mental. Like there's a black slick on the floor now from this this surface vomiting forth this this liquid, um, and also it like it it completely occluded your mind. You could feel like your your brain trying to like resist the effects of these scything tentacles. And um, once you recover your senses, you look back to the mirror. Um, and the dagger is still in your hand, Sarek, and the 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 mirror is completely intact. Sark turns around, walks back to Aya, and just, it didn't work. <laughs> Did those tentacles- He's like covered in goop, just like hands? it didn't. Are those like solar demon tentacles? Even? Um, they, they, so like Tim the solar demon, he, he looks like an octopus. His flesh mm-hmm. is made out of like this blackish blue, like purpley flesh. There's like, um, it almost looks like lava, except where like lava has like the orange between the black cracks. Um, Tim has bright blue between those black cracks on his skin, but that's like a very physical thing. These these tentacles were like shadow and um, okay. yeah, and and psychic, you know, Got it. elements. Yeah. Hmm. 
Perhaps Are we you? should <sighs> g try something else. And then maybe come back when we are better prepared for whatever the hell that was. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, it kind of pointed us in the right direction, some would say. But we heard something, but what does that... Where was it? Where do we go look? No idea. Hmm. Did it sound close or did it sound pretty far off, Stephen? Um, give me an. Uh, hang on, let me look at your character sheet. <coughs> Stand by. Standing. Give me a perception check, Aya. I am not perceptive. You are bad at that. Yeah, uh, you don't really know. The sound seems to sort of come from everywhere. You know, had no particular origin. Sounded like it was coming from up. Do we, can, would I recognize <coughs> any of those sounds? Like there was an explosion and gurgles and like, are those sounds we've heard before? Would we recognize any of them? Give me a, a wisdom saving throw, Sark. Wisdom saving throw? Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, Sark. Um, you've heard this sound before. Uh, it happened like when you, when you very first were um, starting to explore, you know, into the the phenomenon. Um, you heard those same sounds and that same sort of explosion. I, I think that y'all were all outside at that time. Um, so, like, it, it sounds it sounds like something you've heard before, but you don't remember more than that. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. All right. I. I, I guess I would inform everyone that I recognize the sounds from when we first entered, but that I don't particularly know what they w would be related to, but we've definitely heard them before. I feel like it was coming from someplace up. The only thing that's up is a dragon, and I personally would not like to be there. Maybe you stabbing the glass stabbed the Dargan. I mean, if, if that's the case, then let's find some more glass. I'll take them. Because it sounded like it sounded like a gurgle. Gurgles are never good. You never gurgle when you're happy, unless you're Tim. Tim's cute. We should go see Tim. I hate Tim. <laughs> Okay, well, what if we go back to the portcullis and see what's on the other side? Mm. Yeah. Could do that too. Maybe we could find a high vantage point and see if there is a giant winged beast still roaming oh, around there up there. Is. Oh, there is. It, maybe not. Maybe you stabbed it. <laughs> nope, that is definitely. I. You know what? You could go look. I've had my fair share of being hurt today. Well, I'm saying much. from a distance. Well, we can go ahead through the portcullis and see if we can find something to climb to maybe, you know, take a little peek -see. All right. Well, a after you then. All right. After me then. And I <laughs> walk up back through the slimy hole. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. into the jail cell room there's jail cell on one side and the torture implements on another side a staircase mm -hmm. spiraling upwards mm -hmm. you walk up it into the dargan room the gold yep. statue room yep. and then you back into the, the gold statue room where the oil first splashed on all of us yeah you go down into the portcullis area mm -hmm. okay cool so uh, looking to your left, you can see out the front entrance of the Barbican down towards the um, drawbridge that you came across when you approached the, the Barbican. To your right, you can see, uh, let's see, you, you see a, um, a path winding to your right, a street. Uh, it looks like it's winding towards <laughs> what looks like a flagpole with a drifting pennant and a, na a makeshift barricade built up around it sort of in the distance. There's a, a long stretch of road leading that way. Hmm, okay. Is, what is to the left? 
Uh, so like to the left back behind you, there's the, uh, the, the drawbridge that you came across where you uh, got gotcha. you. Okay. 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 I thought this was, all <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we definitely should head that way towards the flag. Mm -hmm. Let's do cool. it. Yeah. All right. You, you all walk towards the right. Um, and as you, as you reach the, the raised portcullis itself, um, what you see ahead of you is a long stretch of broad road, at least 300 feet long. Um, the road is about 30 feet wide, and on each side are tall walls. So this road is completely um, enclosed. There's no ceiling, but there are walls on each side. Um, at the tops of each walls, there's four stone statues facing down into the road. There's broken debris all over the center of the road. There's like broken wagon wheels, wagon beds, tables, chairs, etc. It looks like there's just like junk that had been like looted or like people building barricades. Like you're all struck by this scene and remember of course that this city just went through a war like four months ago. Um, there's a gutter in the center of the road covered by an iron grating that's separated into small sections over the gutter. And uh, all of you notice that the road has javelins sticking up out of the dirt and broken off against the stone, just like sticking up all over the middle of the road. This looks familiar. This is, this is terrifying. <clears throat> Uh, I assume we're going through? I just... We should be wary. Whatever we do, we should be on our guard. <laughs> hmm. Uh, we should have Armorous take the lead. Sure. That's true. Before we walk through, can I just see if there's, like, danger? <laughs> just see if I can... If danger I can sense. Danger. Tell me more about, uh, like, you're going to have to give me a okay. little more. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm mostly concerned if there's other people or beings in the immediate area that are. Yeah. So when you look down to the end of the road, you can see that um, there's, there's also like a smoke fire, uh, uh, the smoke from a campfire drifting up next to this flagpole pennant. As you stand there and look, do you want to just like, take 10 minutes and like look really carefully. Yes. Yeah, guys. Okay. Yes. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just charge him. Uh, <laughs> but never mind. If Ankara says we should stay, I would all, I'd, I'd also lend an ear and listen, but I mean, I wouldn't guys, have that wisdom. We, I'm not a wise character. <laughs> I just like whisper them like, should we kind of check this out before we just walk into it? It doesn't look safe. Oh, it's it's certainly not safe. <laughs> the question is, in what way? Should I should I investigate this before we go? Uh yes. Okay. All right, Stephen. So yeah, we'll take. All more right. Minutes. Go ahead. How, let's have everybody roll a perception check. This is a group test, so the second oh, highest result is gonna, gonna gonna carry it. <laughs> Woo! Well, it's gonna be a twenty, but let's see what the others get. Ooh. Damn, y'all! Wow. I told you I'm not a wise character. <laughs> yeah, I doesn't care. She's distracted. I'm cleaning. I've got my knife out and cleaning under my nails with the dahaka blade. <laughs> nice. So we'll do that. Take that down. Cool. Um, incidentally, you can see that the sun in the sky, this large red orb, is now cracked through with purple veins that look like they are bleeding out of it. Um, yes, so uh, there, there are no other creatures or people in the road. Like you've sat here for 10 minutes, you've been watching very carefully, um, you haven't seen any movement. I think, um, like, uh, yeah, Ankara, you, you saw like a rat go scurrying across the road and then down into the grate, uh, mm -hmm. you know, of the gutter. Um, there's no other people or creatures in the road. Um, at the end of the road, it looks like there are a handful of people at the camp. There's one person sort of like sitting up on top of this barricade, which is made out of like tables and chairs and, and like dressers, drawers and, and, you know, random shit from houses. Um, there's definitely at least one person like cooking back there. There's like a, a, a small child running around like pantomiming, waving with a sword. Um, that's, that's what you see. 
okay. Uh, well, then I guess we can walk across and say hi to these people. Um, I also now like seeing the sun. I assume the cracks and stuff, the purple veins are bad. Uh, and I am reminded of my concern for the tree that we have back in my hometown that is actively dying without the sun. So I am reminded that we need to hurry up and save the sun. So I'm just like, well, seems okay. Let's go talk to those people. And I just start walking toward them. All right. Yeah, I follow. Cool. So let's get a marching order here. It's Aya first or Ankara first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Sarek and yes. then uh, Aya, then Armrose. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, cool. It starts that way maybe, but he tries to like speed walk to the front and pick up the. Yeah. yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, Ankara. Mm -hmm. You die. An arrow hits you, and you're, <laughs> it's a flaming arrow. You you're are, dead. That's what I was waiting to hear. <laughs> and now you're dead. You, let's see. Yeah, you hear um, a thick, heavy whistle through the air, like whoosh, as two heavy javelins come skewering down out of the sky in your direction. Do I see um, them or? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, like they're, okay. they're whistling in your direction. Both of okay. them hit you. Great. Oh my God. <laughs> and yeah. I'm assuming I'm dead now. How many? You take 15 points of damage. Oh, I'm super dead. Sarek. <laughs> One javelin comes whistling in your direction. Oh no. Oh my God. <laughs> Can I can I try to dodge out of the way of that? No, <laughs> your armor class accounts for your constant vigilance in trying to dodge out of the way of javelins flying at your face. You, however, only take nine damage. That's from cool because I only had nine hit points, so that's great. Cool. cool. <laughs> Armros. Everything seems fine. All right, let's go. <laughs> doop, 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 doop. Dead. <laughs> In Three javelins come whipping out of the darkness in your direction, out of the darkness, from above in your direction. One, two, three. Get Jesus. out of town! Stop right. this! Stop right. this! Armros, you have a 19 armor class, which of course means that all three of these javelins hit you. Stop this madness. Uh, Stop this. <laughs> you take 17 damage, which <laughs> does not kill Armros. Oh. And then Aya, you, you two javelins come flying in your direction. One, two. Uh, yeah, so uh, the second one hits you. Uh, mm -hmm. You only receive one javelin, so that's 1d6 plus three. Take four damage. Do I see where it came from? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the statues on top of the walls have flung javelins at all of you. So they're, oh, they're just statues? Wait, did yeah. they move or did they, the javelin launch out of a hole? You didn't see that far. I'm going to grab the unconscious Sarek and Inkar and drag them back. To the okay, cool. Yep. Um, give me a strength saving throw or an athletics check, actually. 12 plus, you get them both, no problem. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Armoros, you're struggling with these bodies. It's like the pressure, the getting struck by javelins, the, the immediate need to react. You can't get both of them, or like you're gonna stay out here and get hit by another round. In car, it's the one you drop. It's the one I keep. Yeah, no, I was okay. very well aware you of that. Sorry, I keep dragging Kara it back sucks to safety. No, you're the weakest link. <laughs> it's terrible. Aya, uh, what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna ask Armoros for his shield. And see if I can, because I'm not going to be strong enough to pull Sarek behind me. We'll have to go back for him. You've I'm going to ask car. Armoros for his shield and see if I can, like, provide some kind of barrier so maybe he can grab them both. Mm. Well, so uh, Armor Armoros's armor class accounts for his shield. Okay. So it's yeah. not going to block. 
So like holding a shield out in front of him isn't particularly going to protect him any more than his natural holding his shield up against whatever attacks might be coming. Uh, yeah. I wonder if I could strap it to my back like a backpack <laughs> and then grab Sarek by his heels and like do a little backward shuffle with my back facing the general. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense. I'd love to see kind this of roll. like an armadillo. <laughs> are, are you are you trying to grab Sarek? Because it's like clock is ticking. You got six yeah. seconds. Yeah. Okay. So like yeah. the, the immediate action is you grab Sarek and try to pull him back. Yeah. Give me an athletics test. Oh gosh. All right, you're fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. I drag him by his heels with very yeah. paying very little care, just kind of just <laughs> doing yeah. a backward scoot, hitting all the rocks, bump. Yeah, his his head is probably like bumping against the iron grating. Just like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. The the four of you are now safe, safely back under the uh, Barbican gate itself. Um, we've got two people who are down. They're going to start making death saving throws. In fact, mm -hmm. I need both of you to give me one death saving throw, Brit and Sarek each. Well, we can stabilize by the way, right? Yeah. Um, I guess like now that you're you're safe, you could take ten minutes and just like bring them back. Yeah, we do that. Okay, cool. So uh, I think both of you recover to one hit point. Can I use hit dice to save me? Or yeah, I can use my hit dice right to heal myself. Um. So stabilizing them is going to be one person's full-time task for the 10 minutes. So if that's Aya, then you can take a short rest and, uh, yeah. I mean, let's do that. Cause I barely took any damage. So, so honestly, you might want to just like take the 10 minutes to get them both up and then take another 10 minutes to short rest for all three of you. So that the three yeah. of you, okay, sure. cool. So after you, after you wake them both up, both up, um, the sun in the sky blinks out. <laughs> And it's pitch black. Um, Sarek still has that lantern sort of like, you know, loosely held in his hand. And Kara, did you ever like extinguish your produced flame? Uh, technically, no. I assumed it went out when I died. But yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, it had to go out when you died. Are we so, back at full hit points after the rest? No. Uh, after when you take a short rest, you can yeah. spend hit dice to heal. Oh, OK, got it. So once you wake them up, you wake them up to, um, to pitch blackness. And then you're taking a 10 minute short rest to recover. So Jesse recovers seven hit points. And Kara, are you going to spend hit dice as well? What is my defense team? It's 1d10 plus what? Uh, it's on your character sheet, actually, Jeff. Um, I think I'm going to spend one too. What do you so think? you look where you see your current hit points under that is temporary hit points. Below that is on the left, hit dice and death saves on the right. Uh, Click hit dice. Nice. There you go. So I get. Twenty bags. I'm at full. Yep. Uh, and make sure that you mark down the hit dice that you've spent. You're now out of hit dice. Will do. Uh, until you take a long rest. Will do. Cool. And and Kara, are you going to? I will. I was just going to turn into an animal, but mm -hmm. I don't know how long we're going to be down here for. You should turn into a turtle, and we can carry you over our heads. <laughs> I'll live to be 150 years old. Giant tortoise. <laughs> yeah, you could be our shield as we go underneath the javelin. It's just a hit point like a shield. Or something. You're just gonna let she this can take it. She's a turtle. She's fine. I'll be very old later. <laughs> uh, right. I think the turtle idea is fabulous. Because I only have one more uh, time to and oh no i get them all back on my short rest so i guess i have two so i could awesome uh yeah so um after your 10 minutes of short rest in the dark lit only by the lantern of sarek uh the sun blinks back into brightness shining in the sky it's got more purple cracks all over it now um it looks larger if possible yeah mm -hmm. but the light the light returns when the light returns, you all see Aya is like removing some of her finer clothing and like folding it, putting it in her pack. You know what this means, don't you? No. 
of a certain got to use the sewer. Look, the sewer is covered and it goes all the way underneath. We got to get in the sewer. We, we, don't okay. have, we don't have to. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to, but it's what we got to do. So I say we all strip down <laughs> and go into the sewer. Steven, how far away from, are we from those people at the fire? Yeah, it's about 300 feet. Okay, so they're pretty far still. Yeah. There's no don't act like you've back. never hung out in a sewer, Sarek. Mm. Not once, never. <sighs> Not even to visit some of your good friends who are good people but happen to be sewer folk? I know no one who lives in sewers. Oh, well, clearly you're hanging out with the wrong types of people. Perhaps, but I've never hung out with them in a sewer. Well, do you have a better plan? How are we supposed to attack God knows what all the way out there where I can barely see? What hit us? Get skewered I guess, I guess by javelin. Dark and I wouldn't have seen that, right? No, yeah, we we were hit by javelins. Like, what did what did attack us? We don't know. <laughs> I think it was a statue. Have we tried getting the attention of whatever those people are at the end of the road? Do we know that they're black? What? <laughs> yeah, are they black-eyed? Crazy. I mean, people? I can turn into a little animal and like scutter over there to see what they're talking mm. about or what their deal is. I That's guess. a good yeah. idea. Okay. Um, hold on. I don't know what. What should I turn into? I can turn into a like squirrel. a squirrel. Yeah. Is that something that they wouldn't be alarmed by in the area? I'm trying to think of something. They probably that... wouldn't even notice you, or like a rat, and just be sit there and just nibble. I mean, on yeah, the we, did, we did just if see a, a rat. squirrel ran up to you, Britt. Would you be distressed? Well, I mean, they're in. I'm just thinking of like where they are. I but wouldn't a be rat. distressed. A rat but a would rat, work. I feel like they would kill a rat. But we've seen rats run through this area before. We just That's saw true. one. A descriptor right. rat. Yeah, I'll just turn into a little uh, little rat. Cool. Yep. <laughs> turn into a little rat. And uh, I guess just like not run right out in the middle. Just stay against the side um, and run over there. Let me actually, I have no idea. Actually, hold on, guys, because you said they're 300 feet away. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't want to be a rat then because their speed is 20 feet. But you've right? got like an hour plus change of rat time. Oh, okay. I could do that. I could do that. I guess that's fine. I guess that's fine. Become okay. a rat and then go in the sewer. Yeah. Oh, you can do both. I've you done go... that lots of times. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, you can okay. like hear what they're saying and then come back and then mm -hmm. scout the sewer for us. Basically, do mm -hmm. all the work. This is fabulous. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm a rat. I will. I go down there. Okay, cool. You you turn into a rat, uh, and uh, like before I leave, any, I wave with my tiny rat hand. Do you have any particular <laughs> markings as a rat? Do you have like a little white crown around your head to like represent your? Yeah, hand? there's a little like circle up there. Yep. Awesome. I'm like. <laughs> And I run off. <laughs> cool. So you, Watch you out just for go. Hawks. You go straight for this grating over the gutter oh, in the center of the road. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I'm looking up rat stats. Rat stats. Rat, rat stats. stats. You have rat subscribed stats. to rat, rat stats. stats. <laughs> AC ten. Hit point one. Oh man, I really chose a. Sh Bad animal to be. Uh, point so one. Twenty. Smell. Have smell yeah. advantage. Um, Rex give sense. me an acrobatics test to like squeeze your way through these iron bars and get down into this gutter. It's not a sewer. It's not like <laughs> there is a place you could stand up in here. But um, for a rat, it's very spacious. Okay. Um, oh yeah. wait, I rolled that with my normal stats. Does that matter? Um. So uh, I'm got, what I'm saying is you, you rolled a one and a 19 and rats get plus zero on their dexterity. So you, you know, you, you got plus, wait, uh, what, what is that uh, when you're an animal? Let's, let's double check what wild shape does for you specifically. Your game statistics are replaced by the statistics of the beast, but you retain your alignment, personality, and intelligence, wisdom, and charisma store scores. Mm. Okay. You also retain all of your skill and saving throw proficiencies in addition to gaining those of the creature. So, um, 
Are you using like a plus two from being trained in acrobatics? No, that's just your dexterity. Okay, so yeah, you rolled a one and a 19, but I'm giving you advantage because rats are really good at squeezing into small spaces. Yeah. So you, you get through the grating very easily, okay. um, which is good because as soon as you pop your little rat body through, you hear the thunk of a, of a massive heavy javelin slamming into the grating above you. I call out, you're welcome for the pro tip. Uh, yeah, and it, you know, like the, the, the gutter down here is gross. It's like slimy, there's like goop and junk down here. It's, it's very obviously distasteful, but as a rat, you're able to like get up on the side and like clamber over stuff and you know, avoid the grossest puddles or whatever. So um, you're just gonna like run all the way down this, this gutter? Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna, yes. Yeah, you set out. off, booking it, just like zoom, zooming yeah. down the gutter. Um, and as, as you run, like you see up ahead with your little like fuzzy rat vision, um, sort of like a, a, a big mass in the middle of the, of the gutter, sort of halfway down the road. And as you approach, you hear the very telltale. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll slow down <laughs> and sort of like slowly creep up toward it, trying yeah. to figure out what it is. Um, you you see, sort of like hiding behind what looks like I don't know, it's like half of an old boot, or something like that. <laughs> There's a swarm of about a hundred rats. Oh. A rat king? A rat king, no, if you will. No, no! Their tails are not tied together. Thank it's you. It's just a swarm. If you don't know what that is, Chad, you need to Google it and then be weirded out. Oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty weird. All right. Well, I can, like, converse with these rats because I'm a rat, right? That seems plausible. Is that a real thing? Yes. Yeah, rat king. It is. It's horrible. Don't look at it. Yeah. Why is, is that? Because their tails get, like, caught up together. Just nature, man. It's nature. meant to make you feel better about feeding them to snakes. It's like, well, that's what they do on the road. Ah! <laughs> Snake time. As a rat, I'm very offended right now. Um, <laughs> like, I guess I try to like listen to what they're saying if they're making noises. Yeah, I mean, I like, them. you don't suddenly gain the ability to speak rat yeah that's... or anything like that but um like you know like oh right I don't... you could maybe like try to like body language your way into becoming buds with them or something uh yeah i mean what are they doing they're just sort of like sitting there hanging like out. bathing themselves hanging out like sitting you know chilling okay yeah uh yeah i'll just go up to them Okay. And, like make rat noises, I guess. Friendly yeah, you, rat noises. <laughs> you, you go forwards and start squeaking in a friendly tone, and like <laughs> the the ten or so that are closest to you turn around and like bare their teeth. They have like big rat eyes, like this. Are they smiling or like baring their teeth aggressively? <laughs> I, I didn't say they bare their teeth in a grimacing smile. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I mean, I don't know. I need, I don't like need to communicate with these rats. I don't think I'll just it's like slowly rat back away. Like, okay, then <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll do a thing where I look like I'm like, oh, this is not where I meant to go to. My house is this way. Oh, oh. And I just kind of keep going. <laughs> you just like walk into the group of rats. Uh, oh, can I only walk through them to get past them? Yeah, totally. I mean, it's a mm. there's a gutter. It runs in one direction. It's like yeah. a one dimensional line. Yeah, yeah. It's a mass of rats in the middle yeah. of one. Kind of go up, and then I'm just like, oh, and then I like start rat walking like backwards a little bit. Okay. I'm just like, uh, okay, yeah. bye. And then I just go through them. You just like run through them. Try to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Like you, you go zipping forwards and trying to run through them. Uh, and um, 
I'm going to let you roll another acrobatics test. Uh, if you don't get the plus two to see if you're able to like acrobatics your way into giving them disadvantage in their attack against you. What? Rats shouldn't attack other rats. Uh, you know, they didn't <laughs> like you encroaching on their territory. It goes against the rat code. Oh. It's, it's against rat code. Did you roll at 12? Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, they, they oh, all sort of yeah. dogpile on you. Rat pile. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Dude, well, they, you, quick, they, turn into a snake and eat them all. <laughs> when they consume her body, does she die as well, I guess? Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to die gonna, to these rats. We're about to see what's going to happen. It's going to be yeah. very yeah. 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 What is this? What is this phrasing when they consume her body? There were so many different ways to say that. Okay, right. so one. you have a 10 armor class as a rat, so they hit you. You have one hit point. So the rat, oh my God, Brit, the rat takes one damage and dies, and then you turn back into Ankara. <laughs> and Ankara takes one damage. Ankara, of course, is standing up, so she transforms back into Ankara and just like explodes out of the iron grating of the, of the, the gutter. Do you see Ankara coming out eating rats? <laughs> <laughs> just like a, a shark leaping up out of the gutter. Just wait, like wait, rats. Time, no! out, time out, time out, time out, time wait, out, time out. When you say the phrase exploding out of the gutter, what happens to the metal grating of the gutter? Or the metal she... grating just pops up because it's actually just resting there. It's a, it's oh, not, I thought it's she not like bolted down. Expl her body exploded. Out. I thought yeah, she, like... does, she doesn't like Play-Doh extrude okay. out. All right. Yeah, all right. I was <laughs> like... Then. Alex um, Max. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, she stands up, like bursting this cover off of the grating. Okay, I was terrified. Off, off I thought the there was. Uh, and then it is standing there with a swarm of rats around her feet. And uh, you hear, like, the, the arms of the statues just, like, cock. <laughs> what, are you, what do you do, Britt? You're 150 feet from oh, either. Yeah, I'm going to directly turn back into a different animal. Um, okay. <laughs> so roll, roll for initiative, Britt. Oh. Ugh. Man, how many times am I gonna die today? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, 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 I didn't select. Will you put it on my token, please? I didn't. I forgot. Yeah, I, I got you. you, you okay. just, it's, I got you. Don't well, don't worry. It's not my day, guys. Add turn with the, with the three. Yep. Okay. Yeah. There. 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 Okay. Uh. One, two, three, four. holy shit, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those guys rolled terribly. So um, two of them go after you and one of them goes at the same time as you. So you only eat five javelin attacks before you're able to act. Great. You did. Uh, yeah. One, Jesus. Yeah. Two, dead again. three, four, guys, five. Guys, just leave my body to the rats. Uh, so that's... 2d6, 3d6, 4d6. Super dead. <laughs> Plus 12. This no, is wait. a terrible way to die, by the way. Yeah, this is horrible. She's just red mist, like right in front of us. What? Even. <laughs> but are they like piranhas? They are just... you sick? <laughs> She's like, I what? Damn it, is that what this says? Yeah, that's what that says. I take, take 25, 25 damage. Yes. <laughs> but don't <spell> <laughs> from, from, from one crit and two regular hits from Javelin. So you, you took not 3d6, but 4d6 uh, plus nine. Oh, that's of... just not. So now you're dead and rats are just eating you, is what's I guess. happening. You, you, like these Javelins just come whipping through the air, just like thunk, thunk, just blah, dead. Oh my God. Well. Right. well, I'm at minus 17 now, guys. So. <laughs> but What's the, your maximum the, hit the points? The flaw I know. not in the plan. <laughs> Just which the execution. was yeah. brilliant. Just oh, yeah. No, right. you're, you're actually literally dead in card. Yeah, you're dead, right? Yeah. You're at negative your full hit points. So Goodbye. You... What am I, back on the moon now? I'm just hanging out there until they like, come get me? You exactly. actually don't appear on the moon until everybody else either dies or goes. Okay, to so I'm just my spirit you're, you're is just in floating space. there, watching yeah. the rats eat my body. It's like yes. the final scene from Heat. She's just like, nah. <laughs> and I kind of like, they're, and like, they're watching from like 150 feet away. Yeah, right? yeah, they totally just saw you get just obliterated. Look back at the group and go like, she'll be on the moon. She'll be fine. Sark is just like, 
pale face, like, that was the worst thing I have ever seen. <laughs> Where did all those rats come from? I feel like I'm just like, ah, and then I get scared <laughs> of dying, and the rats just drag my body back into the sewer. <laughs> Yeah, you got full matter. fries and they're just eating you and shit. And it's just Never like seen that many rats in my life. It doesn't matter how often I die. I will always remember this. That was terrifying. Eaten by rats. Oh, my God. It's a bad way to go. Honestly. Well, it's up to you guys now. I'm just going to hang out here. While... <laughs> Honestly, it was probably a bad idea to turn into a rat and climb into the... Cool, thanks for telling me that uh, three turns ago. I can't. Do I you told you to go that? talk to the to, to the people at the end of the road. I didn't tell That's you. That's what I was trying to do. I mean, I she almost made it. Who are you guys talking to? This is just like a ghost, like yelling. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Shut up, ghost. Get out of here. <laughs> I mean, look how far she got. She almost made it. Well, what if she? Would you like to get small? that far? What? Would you like to go get that far? Well, oh maybe a little God. bit closer to where that barricade is. Why? Do you think you could throw me? No, I'm saying it's a bad idea. And getting far doesn't matter if you end up getting shot 17 times and eat my rats. <laughs> you make a good point. Okay. Did anybody get a better glimpse at where the javelins came from? Above. Uh, the, the, oh, yeah. No, the they, they came from the statues throwing them, like hurling javelins. <laughs> The question is, how do they know where to throw, and how and who to throw at who? Because there's they're they're sentient statues. Let me ask you a better question. Why do we care? Because we're trying to get through here. Well, I just mean we know they're going to throw them at us. Do you think we could get up to the roof and break the statues? Uh, we could yeah. climb. We could climb. I've seen you fall from. <laughs> Wasn't that you, sir? That went up on the in and the rafters. Saved the day. <laughs> that was me. Thank you very much. Or, or both times. Sneak. Do you not have any kind of magic that can cloak us or get us over there? No. Not anything like that. Listen, as much as I would love to turn us all into shades or into rats so we could wage a rat war in the sewers, I such abilities are beyond my grasp for now. What if we just set the rats on fire? What? We set the, we, we set the rats on fire. Isn't there like a brazier back there? We go back. We grab a card. We come back. We set those bastards on fire. And then we go through the sewer. Is the sewer big enough, big enough for us to fit, Stephen? So you, you you sort of like bend down, look at the the gutter. Yeah. Um, it's about two feet wide and about two feet deep. That's a strong no. So uh, if you squeeze and you're like army crawling your way up the sewer, great gutter. Yes, but um, it's going to be tight. It's not like. I can swing a sword in here. It's like I am sliming my belly up the, the grating, up the gutter, through the muck to, to make my way up. How do rats feel about insects? They, I mean, I suppose do you want me to send they... bees at them? I can always send bees at them. <laughs> I don't know why he went to old lady voice said, for who a said lot. That? <laughs> Did we get a new party member? Who was that? <laughs> Do you want me to send bees at them? <laughs> That's, that should have been this my voice like, since day one. 1950s, like, <laughs> let him know, Gertrude. There's fucking spear chucking statues up there. There's racks in the sewer. I suppose I could try something bees at character. them. <laughs> My Our character's name is, is now Gertrude. <laughs> My character is now Gertrude. Gertrude Glasscock, and she is of the North Hampshireshire Glasscocks. And don't even question it. <laughs> it's spelled like G L A S S G O U G H K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Still, I'm still cracking up the scene of us standing there. 
and fucking Brit bursts out of <laughs> bursts out of the sewer and immediately like gets hit by every single spear and then dies and is dragged down by the rats. And you're like, well, shit. How are we gonna get home with it? And the guards like, we go up there and kill the statues or something. Or like... oh. Brit, didn't, Brit didn't just die. She got fucking obliterated right in front of us. Like... I imagine she just sort of like sunk slowly back into the sewer as no, she was I think that consumed the from the bottom. So hard that my body actually like came into pieces, and the rats just pulled <laughs> just pulled each part down. down. <laughs> uh yeah i mean okay so we can't get through there i we need to solve the riddle of the statues right we need to figure out why they can see us where they can see us where they know to throw how their aim is so damn accurate right how is it as simple as we just have to like acrobatics our way through this or is it much more complex there's got to be a reason to the season is what i'm saying well you're the nimble one Go ahead. Do one of your little barrel rolls and try to get to that little barricade. Do a barrel roll. <sighs> All right. Sarek just like. Mm, here come get, the rats again. Sarek is going. I'm going to try and acrobatics my way to the barricade. Okay. Awesome. Sarek, roll an acrobatics check for me, please. All right, do this. I can make this happen. That's athletics, so do oh. roll the correct oh. score. Oh, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah, you saved his, reading, his reading isn't that, you know, his reading skills are one. That's no okay. better. Unfortunately, even though you rolled a 10, which is not great, uh, acrobatics isn't relevant to your avoiding taking damage from the seven spears that come winging your way. It's totally, uh, it's totally, it just doesn't matter. I'm just <laughs> floating above him. But he's like a harder Can I describe the scene? Right? Literally, yes. Sarek's like, I shall do it. And then he like salts into the room <laughs> and just gets punk. I mean, look at these fucking rolls, man. <laughs> It isn't even a somersault. 26. It, it, it isn't even a somersault. Sarek's like, I shall do this. Turns, steps one foot out, immediately impaled. All these things, get, not even not even make it to the road. Just like turns, is like, don't worry. I've got like it. Immediately kill. like one zig in, like zigzag his way there. He gets like one turn, and then he's just... Immediately impaled. killed, mid-sentence, dead. Yeah, no, you don't even have to roll for damage. Us. I can't. I have eight HP. There's no way. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm super dead. I'm super duper dead. Are you super dead with me? Or are Are you gonna be? A yeah. Scary? No. I'm super dead. And as I'm super oh dead, God. the rats scurry out and drag my <laughs> ass into the sewer. They just like, like one incredibly buff rat just like lifts up the grate, grabs your body, and pulls it under. Yeah. yeah. The rats are eating well tonight. Oh my god! Them spear boys uh, doing a good job up there. We're gonna eat like king. <laughs> the rats have a deal with the statues. Oh my gosh! Uh, well, to good death. luck. Yeah, good luck, y'all. I have well, no idea what to do. Well, let's dead. go. And I like kind of sigh and head back towards the brazier. <laughs> I just shrug and follow her, yeah. Nice. I just dejectedly put my hand on it. <laughs> just... Yeah. All right, you, you put your hand on the brazier. There's the... And then you wake up. The sky is beautiful and filled with stars. There's a soft bed of grasses underneath you. You hear a gentle voice at your ear. Welcome. It's so good to see you. I think that's where she should take our, our break for today. So let's do a five minute break. We'll come back and continue the puzzle of the the, 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 the I just like to know that the moment I gain consciousness in my body, I am still screaming <laughs> so loudly. Just, ah! so, before I realize where we are. <laughs> that almost worked until the horde of rats. It didn't almost work at all. That was a shit show. That was terrible. Hello, everyone. Oh, I tried to get you. 
<laughs> welcome back. Uh, I wouldn't do that to you. You were muted. Um, welcome back. Let's jump back into this thing. Uh, we're now not dead anymore, so that's cool. Cool. Yeah, you're all you're all on the gardens of the moon. Which means, as we, we clarified during the break, your hit points are back at full. You have recovered all of your spell slots. You've recovered all of your class feature stuff. Um, you've recovered all of your hit dice, because hit dice get fully restored on a long rest, on a visit to the, the Gardens of the Moon. You can change out what spells you have prepared, uh, if you're a class that prepares spells, like the Druid does. Tell me what the plan is. You're all lying here on the gentle, breeze-laden grasses of the Gardens of the Moon. What if we just stay here? <laughs> Surely, surely there are other, if totem pole is any indication, there are other people trying to save the world. What if we just stay here? No one will know. I'm wandering back to my little rock area to see if there's any spells that will help us. Nice. I'm just, no one? Saloon, you'd like us to be here, right? I'd love it if you just stayed here. See, Saloon's in. But Saloon's always in. Honestly, I just think Saloon is lonely. No offense, Saloon. It's but Sarek, who will get me my tears? God damn it. Okay. <laughs> Fine. What do you all think we should do? I'd rather not die again. I mean, I could prepare Pass Without Trace and try to cast it on all of us so we can just waltz our way in. Would that work? It lasts an hour. It requires concentration, so I wouldn't be able to like do any spells other than that while we're hidden, but hopefully that would not be required if we were invisible. I don't it's suppose what if they have some kind of I mean, yeah, supernatural it, detection. If they have magic, then we're we're uh We just don't know how they work. Look at that aim. It has to be magic. Who's that accurate? I think you still prepare it though. It's a good idea. Yes, that is a good idea. Okay. It's a great idea. Do you think it's possible to you said Oh god. Go against everything I've said. Go up to the top, to the tower, to the roof. Oh, and you know attempt what? attempt to cross over. Use our invisibility to get past said dragon and then I don't know, push those statues over. F them. That's what I say. Push those statues right down to the ground. Yeah. This is a really good plan. Except for the one small wrench. Which is that pass without trace. I was just going to say that. I just thought that spell. it's actually a level two spell. So we can't can't do it. Sorry, guys. Um, it's soon. If you get another tier. Well, what, what if we... Uh, what if we go... Honestly, after seeing what happened to you, which you did not see, thankfully, and seeing what happened to Ankara, I would rather take my chances with the dragon because I, I was, don't I want to be cloud. my rats. I have I was, fog cloud. Yes, I was about to say the same. Strangely enough, I feel like a dragon is less scary than whatever the hell this is. At least it would be quick instead of being skewered and eaten by a thousand mm. tiny little mouths. Oh, and Kara, they took your pieces down there like you were some kind of fucked up jigsaw puzzle. It was terrifying. Oh. I will never forget what happened to you, ever. And I've seen some shit in my life. I've done some shit in my life. But that was a whole new level of Very weird. unpleasant. Now yes. that I'm alive again, I'm just like, well, they're animals and rats need food too. You were their food. You are you you are people. You are look, people. I you are the food. And now I'm myself again. So helpful. Nature <sighs> wins. <laughs> uh, let's all right. Let's go. Do you guys want to go fight the dragon? Because I do have fog cloud, which like could probably get us over there. Unless, like Wait. you said, bronze, they have magic. Mm-hmm. Let's at least attempt to see what the dragon's about. Maybe we don't have to fight him. Maybe, maybe we can the, talk to him. Maybe. Maybe the dragon's on our team and he'll fly us over. I spoke to the ooze. I'm sure I could speak to a dragon. It's probably more pleasant to talk to than the ooze. Yes, and, and less demanding, one would say. Mm. 
The ooze was super demanding. So demanding. Okay. I'm going to prepare Fog Cloud in case we change our minds. Cool. What other spells are you taking? Uh, I get, how many do I get? What, like uh, three? I get three first levels, that I, but I can prepare four, right? You can prepare a number equal to like your druid level plus your wisdom modifier. So yeah, I can prepare so four. five spells per day. Oh, five. Okay. Yeah. Mm, then, I mean, I have Flaming Sphere from the scroll. So right now I have, I can, I guess I can remove Cure Wounds or Healing Word. I think we were um, going to get you, rid of Cure Wounds. You spent the scroll of Flaming Sphere. Oh, it only applies once. Okay. So, Fog Cloud, should I keep Snare, guys? Mm. Um... I feel like what, what are your options so that so we know what we're giving up? I'm gonna keep healing word in case we need it because sometimes we do. Fair. Uh, I have entangle, which seems to have been entangle cool. is really cool. I have healing word, entangle, snare, fog cloud. So I could keep those and make one more. Um, and my options are thunder wave, speak with anim animals, long strider, jump. Speak Good with man. animals would have been useful with the rats. Yes, it would have. Well, but I mean, is that going to be like? We can go back to the rats and attempt to speak with the animals. I have animal friendship too, instead of speak with animals. Animal friendship? What? Yeah, and the spell lets you convince. Then they the wouldn't have eaten you. No harm. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they might still have eaten her. Uh, I mean, if I mean, she's already yeah. dead. Yeah. But Maybe we should talk to the rats. Instead of you being a rat, you talk to rat, well, use rat to as your it, spy. So and more importantly, they're full it. now, so they're not going to eat anyone. Those rats have all the meat they could possibly <laughs> want. Okay. So I want to prepare animal friendship and okay. fog cloud. Cool. And w healing word and then entangle and snare. You have so many spells. I have like two. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Warlocks are so weird. Animal friendship. Did it. Okay. Awesome. I have three and they all involve killing. <laughs> One's not even a spell. I just stab people. <laughs> all right. Cool. All right, so dragon or back to rats? Guys, it's call. I'm good either one. way. I mean, I'm fine. I'm you fine know what? trying to dine again. Let's go see the dragon. We've been to the rats. We've lived the rat life. Let's go check out this dragon. We've run away from the dragon. Maybe the dragon's just lonely. <laughs> you never know. All right. Yeah, maybe it has like a thorn in its paw, and if we get the thorn out, the dragon will be like, thank you, friend. Let me fly you to the end, and we'll win. <laughs> it's worth a shot. Sure. All the eagles. Yeah. Dragons don't even have paws, Derek, but sure, let's go. Dragon paw. Dragon I went, paw. Went, I went to an inn once called the Dragon Paw. It was quite good. Nice. All right, so... Who's leading the party back through the uh, reflecting pool? I will. All right. Armoros, you go, you gaze, you fix the sunfire brazier in your mind, and when you look around, there you stand in this room. You hear the whispers coming from the stairwell. Yes, we know exactly what to do with you. Um, you see the half-open secret door leading uh, this stairway up. You see the door or the staircase leading down to the portcullis area. Now the four of you are all here. What would you like to do? Uh, I imagine go down to the portcullis. Okay. Kill the guy uh, who's like kill the guy who's there. The one <laughs> dude. <laughs> go ahead and make an attack roll, Jesse. Well, I'm trying to play plan this out with the group, just so we can oh, figure okay. out what all we're right, doing. Cool. So we go down, we kill the one dude who's there, we avoid the the areas that we know drop the oil. Yes. Then we go up the other side through the secret door, 
or not secret mm -hmm. door, but I guess the door that was previously locked. Go up that side. Go all the way up to this to the stairwell that leads to the ladder that leads to the top. Cool. Because that should be the least amount of battles we have to fight. If it's just, I think, one guy. I think. Path of least resistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we go down there and I just, like, stab this guy in the back. Cool. Yeah, give me a stealth roll. Sure. Stealthy, With advantage. Because you've done this roll. much. Oh yeah, nailed it. Give me a uh, a, a rapier attack with advantage because you're attacking from hiding. <coughs> you hit, roll for damage, and then also you get your 1d6 for your sneak attack. Okay, roll your 1d6. You deal 14 damage and stab this guy straight through the heart. He collapses. Uh, you get 1d4 gold pieces. 1d4 gold? <laughs> Three gold pieces rain from the sky. Yeah, I collect all three and then toss it back to the three people behind me because I'm like all business right now. It's bing, like, bing, like bing, bing, bing. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, stab. Let's go. We got stuff to do. Let's go see this dragon. Nice. Yeah, okay. You uh, throw open the door. You've got the portcullis area in front of you. Uh, And then I guess we just sneak our way. Well, not sneak. We know where stuff's at. Does it require sneak to avoid... Being hit with like lava, or not lava, but oil or slimes or all the different traps that are in this room. We know where they're at, right? You're on this screen, right? You can see what I'm seeing. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'll... Like, walk for me a path. All right. We'll so if here. we, if we're like here, right? Yep. And this is where we come from. I would specifically go along the wall, mm -hmm. up, and then over to here to go up to where we need to go to get it up. Like, basically avoid all the crap that we've... Like, we know where stuff is, so I would specifically try to avoid where I... I specifically, because I've been eaten by slimes, I've been oiled, I all the things that have happened to me, I know exactly where not to step. Uh, all right, so show me. Yeah, so uh, Sarek walks along, uh, like, on the side of the wall, up to the top. Yeah, yeah, you're, like, pressed up against the wall, sidling sure. away. Yeah. And then you Sarek... smell that acrid hot oil scent wafting down from the holes in the ceiling above. And then Sarek moves across to the other wall up here, cool. near where the portcullis was before. Yeah. And then down to the door, down to here, which cool. is now open, and then on through. Yes. Yep. All right. Sounds good. So the rest of you do that. <laughs> Sounds like a trick question, but sure. yeah. <laughs> All right, Aya follows, and Kara, do you do that same pattern? Uh, yes. Okay, Armrose. Yeah. All right, cool. You all make it across. <laughs> you no all <problem>. die. <laughs> you know, you don't get boiling oil or blood oozed. You make it across. You're in this other room. Let's see what I can tell you about it again. Uh, you know, there's a hole in the south floor. It smells like damp and iron, and that's where the ooze pits are. In the center of the room, there's a handful of cots that are arrayed in rows. Looks like, you know, some sort of bedroom slash dormitory type area for the guards who were here. On the north wall, there's a large stone fireplace with a draconic head carved over the mantle with glittering eyes, open mouth, dirty fangs. It is swung open to reveal a spiral staircase behind it. Up we go. All right. So yeah, Sark just heads up. Cool. You head up the stairs. You make your way up the curving stairs until you encounter a closed wooden door at the top of the stairs. Uh, Sarek opens said closed wooden door. You open the closed wooden door. There are chains hanging down from the ceiling in profusion, vanishing into the darkness and the rafters above. Uh, it is dark in here, so someone's going to have to produce some light. I'm I hold the, the lantern in front of me as I lead cool. the way. Nice. And uh, we should see at this point a ladder, yes? Yes. In this room, there's a ladder along the back wall leading up. Sarek points to the ladder and is like, well, there's our ticket up. <laughs> I'm not going first. Y'all are crazy. I led the way long enough so I didn't have to. I was a brave boy, just a big old brave boy, <laughs> until I got to the ladder. And then it was like, all right, I'll sit here and hold the light for everyone after you. Uh, our plans to talk to the dragon, you said. Anybody? Uh, yeah. I mean, Bueller. it's... 
Yeah. It is kind it's kind of our plan, yeah. Then I shall lead and I will that walk. Threw me in. off because that's my last name. <laughs> Mueller. <laughs> Mueller. For a second there, I was like, I haven't heard that since high school. <laughs> All right, so Armoros, you're leading the crew up the ladder. Let me drag you out in place of Kairos. There we go. Cool. Who is following Armoros? Uh, I, I mean, I have to stay back and hold the light for everyone to get up, so I got to be last. All right, so I'm going to go with Ankara Aya Sarek. Okay. Yep, you all make your way up. You make your way into this uh, sort of main area of the wheelhouse here. Looks normal. There's a large central uh, wall of like sturdy wooden uh, beams and iron reinforcements and, you know, wrought iron gears and wooden gears and like ropes and chain pulleys and things like that. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we just go up and around to the other ladder and keep heading up. Cool. All right, yeah, you're back in this back room where there's a whole bunch of chains dangling in here. It's it's quite dim from all of the visual obstruction. There's a ladder along the back wall leading up to a trap door in the ceiling. <coughs> can Armrose, I, can I use the first. lantern to light the brazier that's in this room? It's already lit. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I go in. All right. You climb up the land ladder until you hit the trap door. Are you just going to push it open? Yeah. Okay, you push the trap door open and poke your head out. You look around, there's a large flat rooftop area about the same size as the room that you're looking at right here right now. And um, you hear uh, a horrible growl from behind you, a guttural, like heavy chested growl. Let's see. From a I... large creature, I'd imagine. From a large creature, it is true. Let's see. Uh, ooh, ah. Uh, mm. Ooh, ah, you're I, dead. Ooh, ah, you've died. Ooh, ah, mm. If I do this, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I move that up here. Yeah, yeah. And then, what, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 65, 10, 20, 30, 45. Okay, cool. Just checking sizes. Mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30, 45. Wonderful. So Armrose, you're over here. The others of you are down uh, either below or on the ladder. Well, I get out of the way the ladder, turn and face it, shield up, look at it. And then I mumble, we're just here to talk. And then that's the down. Cool. I'm going to grab the wyvern, which is over here. Bring it right there. Well, that's there we clearly a demon. <laughs> no, it, no, look, it's, it, it says wyvern on the bottom. All right. You know what? Who might have judged how he looks? That's just mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you're you're up on top of the walls, and actually the walls of the um, of the of the palace compound stretch to the left and to the right. There's like a stairs leading down from the top of the Barbican that you're up here on top of um, to both the left and the right, and you can see down. Uh, well, actually, from where you are, you can't see down yet because you're looking across the flat surface of this, the roof of this building. So, um, Armros, you say we're just here to talk. Yep. Give me a persuade roll. Ooh. Fantastic. Fifteen. Oh wow! Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, the creature looks like it doesn't understand your language, or maybe yeah. any language. It just opens its mouth and screams, shaking its head at you as it like raises frills on the back of its neck. Uh, roll for initiative. Okay. God damn it, we're all gonna die. No way, we're Look gonna at beat that this thing. dragon. We're beating that this dragon. That thing looks creepy as fuck. We got, we got this. This okay. cloven hooves. <laughs> this cloven hoof dragon, we've got this. Nice. Cloven hooves over here, this guy. 
turn seven. Bad head over here. The fuck? Oh, I have to click, click on my token, right? Where's yeah. Yeah, just click on your token, then then click initiative. Where's my dude? Right At the here. bottom. Oh, you've already got your initiative rolled there, uh, Armros. Yeah, but I didn't click my token, so it doesn't count, right? <laughs> All right, cool. Let's order that. All right, Sarek, you hear uh, from from down below on the ladder. You hear we're just here to talk, and then. Right. Um, and I'm assuming that you just go whipping up the ladder. Uh, yeah, I, I go up the ladder and, um, so it's 20 foot climb. Sure. It costs, uh, two squares of movement to climb one square vertically. Okay. So, uh, it's going to cost you eight squares of movement to climb. Okay. Which you can only spend if you move and then take the dash action. But of course, you can spend your cunning action to take right. the dash action. That's what I was just about to ask. Yeah. Can I cunning action when I get oh. up to the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you get like 15 feet up the ladder. You're five feet below the trap door. You can cunning action to move another 10 feet. You have 20 feet left in your cunning action movement. Yeah, so I, from I, here, you can move up to 20 feet. Yeah, I just want to get behind Amros and prepare uh, to, to shoot if I can. Yeah, go ahead and move yourself where you want to be. <clears throat> I'm going to elbow Ankara and be like, is this the type of animal you can be friends with? <laughs> mm. Steven, can I ask you a question? <laughs> um, yes. Is, I'm not this, an animal. Was, is this a thing when you said that it doesn't appear to understand Amaros? You're literally the implication. That it's is not that intelligent, it, right? Not yeah, right. It, it, it's it's understand the language. Right. Yeah, you don't see the glimmer of a human level intelligence. In okay, gotcha. That's okay. What I thought. The glimmer of a bestial level intelligence. In and then it's Sorry. why Ankara should become forest princess and thing her forest because she's basically a Disney princess. And Ankara, Disney princess, can befriend the dragon. Mm. Sorry, I you've, don't, you've just I now stepped off of the back end of the wall here. <laughs> oh, I just, I mean, I wanted to be like either behind or next to uh yeah, th Amaros. that's a good spot right there do you want to do anything um if i have the ability to i want to fire off an arrow at this dude go for it man i hate dragons Damn. 21 hits I really do hate dragons i hate Six dragons piercing damage yeah your arrow like sticks in the thick leathery hide on its lower jaw and then it opens its mouth and it screams just like you know a bellowing roar and then it leaps into the air flying oh, in it flies. <laughs> oh but wait see. do you have a you, you have like fog it. roots or snare or something yeah oh fog you I can't have see to a set snare i could cast fog cloud and then i have to set snare and potentially i could try to thorn with him and pull him down oh no fog area. cloud us and then i'll just be like that sounds like a lot oh we got this this is gonna be great so let's see it it flies to here our uh Sarek. okay oh my God. Oh and, my God. and knocks my ass right it, off just like <laughs> it slashes down at you with one of its hind claws it doesn't have arms it only has wings and then yeah, two back so. feet Oh, slashes at you with one of its back feet. This is what they look like, apparently. That's exactly what they look like. Because their arms are wings. Yeah. It hit you with a 14, which okay. is your armor class. Four. 12 slashing damage. Get out of town. So, yeah, I'm glad uh, that... We that should entangle it and get some distance on it. Sarek, up are, from you, range. are you at, at zero hit points? Sarek no. is not only at zero, Sarek is at zero. Sarek yeah. got like, slap, like, you hit me? You hit me? Slap. <laughs> if I can understand draconic roaring, that's what like, bitch. Ah, dead. <sighs> Yeah, uh, and then and then this creature lashes out with its long spiked tail in the direction of Armros, hitting you, Armros. Mm -hmm. Guys, <laughs> animal you know form. We had to learn. We had to learn what this fight was going to be about. We had to learn. It, it deals you ten piercing damage, and then I need to make it fifteen Constitution saving throw, please. We had to learn. I mean, poisonous. I 
If you're at exactly zero, yeah. I can still cast Healing Word on you, right? Yes, I'm exactly zero. Okay. You can still cast Healing Word on him even if he's below zero because there oh, is no right. below zero. You can actually just always do it. Uh, so that's, yeah, uh, you feel this burning poison just like pumping into your veins and your heart seizes, Armoros. You take 30 damage. Jesus. Um, oh my God. Oh my God. Well. Well. Okay. Ar Armoros dies. <laughs> I mean, while we're here. This thing is poisonous. Oh, and then it's that. Okay. And then it's my turn. Yeah. And, and then it goes flying somewhere. Cool. Uh, uh, and now it's in Kara's turn. And Kara, you just heard like a roar and then a, a swipe and then a plap and then a yeah. sound that sounded like it was puncturing metal and then another plap. Um, I mean, okay. I guess what I could do is like go up there and cast Fog Cloud and then heal uh, Jesse, and then wait till my next turn to set a snare and hope to catch it. Because we have Armorous's body, Flawless. if we could drag it into the snare area, and I could set the snare trap around the body and hope to like. You you know I love that. So I don't know. You're gonna try. To, I mean, snaring it might not be a bad idea. Well, it's flying, so we need to capture it somehow. <laughs> and entangle only works on the on the ground. So I guess we could do a tangle if it lands, but it seems like, I don't know. Well, I'm definitely gonna get up there and cast Fog Cloud, that's for sure. I think that's, I mean, we might as well try if we're all gonna die. Let's just see what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna move up there and uh, yeah, cast a Fog Cloud. That's cool, okay, so you get up to the top. Um, so uh, in Kara, Here's the challenge, right? The, the, the ladder is 20 feet tall, uh -huh. which means that normally that's four squares of movement, five feet per uh -huh. square. But because you're climbing, you have, you're moving at half speed. So what's your move speed in Kara? Uh, let me check. 35. 35? Yeah, so you can get like almost up the ladder in one movement. Okay. But if you actually want to like get out and off of the ladder, you have to spend extra movement and that takes a dash action. So that would consume your I mean, your can't I action. cast Fog Cloud from the top of the ladder? Because I can see into the area, right? You can you could just like aim a fog cloud right at the top of the ladder and then do it there. Okay. I'm just gonna do that. Cool. Um so I cast that. Let's hang on. Let's take a look at exactly what Fog Cloud does. Yes. So Go ahead and put it into chat for me. One so action, put, range 120 feet. Yeah. Verbal and somatic concentration. So we have to remember to uh, test that if you take any damage for any reason. Oh, right. Can last for up to an hour. You create a 20 foot radius sphere of fog centered on a point within a range. The sphere spreads around corners and its area is heavily obstructed. It lasts for the duration or until a wind of moderate or greater speed disperses it. Okay, so um, here's what we've got. Right, right here, sort of in the center, I'm gonna go back into the background and draw a 20 foot radius sphere. Now someone, uh, we've got just, just the most helpful group of, of players online is just correcting us all the time because we're terrible at playing Dungeons and Dragons. Um, <laughs> This time, it actually is a 20-foot radius from the spot that you're at. So that's 10, that's 20 up here is the edge of it. So then 10, 15, uh, yeah. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20. Fuck. So that is the area that is covered by your fog cloud now. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'll use my... Bonus act. Can I use my bonus action to cast Healing Word? Healing Word is a first level spell, and you can't um, cast um, two first level spells in a turn. If Healing Word were a cantrip, then you could cast Fog Cloud, oh. which is a first level spell, and. Well, mm, that's okay. Hang tight, buddy. <laughs> I'm still going to be here. I'm not going anywhere. We've got a Fog Cloud now, at least for. <laughs> yeah. Now, no, now I mean, we can't sleep for a either. while. I don't know. I just yeah. panicked and like cast Fog Cloud so we could. It's all good. Out. I mean, that sounds uh, fine. Normally I would show you where this creature is right now, but now you're in the middle of a fog cloud and you can't so see. So we can't see either. 
Yes. Maybe this was not helpful. Okay. Well, I guess that's my turn. <laughs> All right, Aya, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Cower. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm gonna. Okay, uh, hold up. Let's see. We came up here with a purpose. So if I look around me, other than the dragon, what do I say? Or the wi wyvern? Well, so you're still down at the bottom of the stairs. So I am. Actually, you're right. From your head, you know, five and a half feet off the ground, what you see around you is fog. Mm. And like the faint outline of a ladder right next to you. I'm going to sit down on the floor next to the ladder and put my head in my hands like this. <laughs> fog seeps down from above and you're just like... And you just see Aya thinking up a storm of, of what could possibly. Yep. All right. Cool. Sarek, I need a death saving throw. Cool. Uh, one, of, one of these days, one of you is going to roll a 20 and pop back up. You got a 14, so it's not today. Okay. Mm. <laughs> what can I do? Yeah, what can you do? Yeah, what can you do? What can, what can, you, can, do? What can you do? Oh, you guy. just made a player disappear with rats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't actually need a wyvern, you guys. I can do this with a uh, with a uh, swarm of rats. Stick, I was gonna say you could just stick your rear rat swarm on us. And <laughs> all right, here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> the wyvern was rats. Three d six, and three d six gives us a number between three and eighteen. If we compare that number to the ability score chart, that gives us a modifier of between like this plus going. four and minus four. Mm -mm. This is going to tell us how accurate the wyvern is to your location in a number of squares. So let's see. We roll 3d6. We got a 16, which translates to a plus three. So the wyvern is off of your location by three squares um, in, a, in a vertical direction. So like one, two, three, four, we roll 1d4. Uh, so you hear this wyvern come like tearing down out of the sky, Ankara, and um, it sounds like it's like off to your left and behind you, but like it just like slams into the ground. You feel the stone beneath you shudder. You hear the, the roaring howl of this beast <coughs> You hear like claws scraping against stone and like the lash of a tail go as it like cracks at faster than the speed of sound. It's your turn. This creature did not land anywhere near you. You didn't see it. You felt the fog sort of whipping around you. What do you do? All right. Well, uh, I will first spend my bonus action to cast Healing Word. So Jesse is not dead anymore. Sarek isn't dead. Does Healing Word require line of sight? God damn it. Oh, let's see. Why don't you click it so we can put it but in I chat? I can see within range, regains hit points. That you can see. So yeah, you're going to have to crawl over to Sarek. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. This is a terrible plan. <laughs> this is, it's not, I mean, this is desperation, right? This is either like, get We up. tried to talk to a dragon. <laughs> you, you know, it, it it could have been great. It could have been beautiful. Just just absolutely beautiful. Um, Britt, for the record, if you're touching Jesse, it's actually stronger to use Cure Light Wounds. But of course, that's oh. a, a full action instead of a bonus action. Yeah, I think I'll use my bonus action because I wanted okay. to like turn into an animal or something. Cool. Yep. So you healing word, Jesse, go ahead and roll 1d4 plus 3. Yo, 1d4 plus 3. Cool. All right. I'm back, baby! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then Britt, what do you want to do with your action? I mean, let's see. Well, hmm. Can I set the snare without stopping my fog cloud concentrate? Oh no, I already, I already did healing word, which is level one spell, so I can't yes. do that right now. Correct. Okay. Um, um, hmm. Let's see. Huh. 
I mean, do we want me to thorn whip this thing and try to drag it towards us? <laughs> or, hmm. Uh, oh, wait, I can't turn it into an animal because that's a bonus action. So I can only, basically only cast a cantrip now, right? Um, I am uncertain on that point. Let me, let me read a little bit. I believe bit it's a bonus it. action to turn into. As a but moon druid, you can do it as a bonus action, but I'm wondering if it's like a, you can also do it as a bonus action right. or if it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's a hard bonus action for you now, like no other action. Let's see, wild shape. Starting at second level, you can use your action to magically assume the okay. shape of the moon you've seen before. Let's check out circle of the moon. Um. You gain the ability to use the wild shape on your turn as a bonus action rather than as an action. So to me, this says you can do it either way. So okay. yeah, you can still use your action to turn into an animal. All right. So I guess I'll just keep the fog cloud up and turn into a bear. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Let's see. I'm going to grab a bear token. Turn into a brown bear. 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 Bear versus brown wyvern bear. action. Now this I regret people, not coming up the stairs. I should have come yeah. up the stairs. I despaired instead. Mm -hmm. You're missing out. You're mi you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. Really. So you got 11 armor. You got 34 hit points. Brown bear and Kara. This is name bar three, and you are controlled <coughs> by. How do I do that? Advanced, basic, save changes. So I want to like stand on my back and try to attack this thing while it flies around. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> or you get someone could get on my back. I have climbing thirty feet, so I don't know if I could climb up the wall. But no. Nope. I'm on. Wall. I'm. I. You transform into a bear, and my next turn is jumping on your back. Oops. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay. Aya. Uh... <laughs> hmm. We're up to you. You're sitting at the bottom of the ladder with your head in your hands. Do I hear bear? Do I hear bear roars? Hear bear roars. Uh, <laughs> start climbing up the ladder. <laughs> okay, twenty foot ladder. Are you are you using both of your movements to get all the way up? Yes, because I'm all despairing right. all the way up. You're despairing hearing the bear. Because <laughs> I know it waits at the top of that. Okay, um, where do you move once you reach the top of the ladder? Um, when I reach the top of the ladder, mm -hmm. I'm going to move probably over to in the direction where Armrose <laughs> is, where I hear the bear sounds. Okay, go ahead and put yourself where you want to be. Okay, here. That's off the edge, so they'll go oh, there. Oh, really? <laughs> I throw myself off the <laughs> Like, <laughs> would, it, would it be amusing, chat, if I if I made her make a saving roll to avoid oh, walking off the edge it. of the building? I mean, it's Sorry. foggy. It is foggy. So that I would probably fall off the edge. You're, you're fine. It's not so foggy that you can't literally see the edge of the building. Uh, okay, cool. Sarek, what do you do? Uh, I jump on the back of that bear. Okay. <laughs> and I am going to... Uh, do I kind of have a general idea of where this thing is? Can I use my um, uh, dark vision to see through like stuff, or is that only dim light? Yeah, it's it's not that it's dark; it's that it's there's fog, foggy. so the, your vision is, is obscured rather than well, there's dark. Then let's... But give yeah. me a perception check, Damn and maybe right. you can hear where this thing is. Hell yes! I'm, oh my god, I'm like a daredevil. Nope, no, I'm not. Six. No, I'm not. <laughs> right. I am not at all. All right, Jesse, uh, roll 3d6 minus four for me, please. What? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Seven. Okay. Uh, we're just going to compare this to the stats score screen. Mm -hmm. Is this That's for me to climb on top two. of a bear? No, no, no. This is for you to hear where the thing is. Oh. Yeah. Um, Jesse, you think you hear the creature making noise from right over here. Okay, yeah, I hop on this. the snur snurfling of its of its lungs and the scraping of its claws. Yeah, I uh, jump on this bear and I fire off a shot in that direction. Awesome, roll an attack. Rolling an attack roll. Cool. 
Yeah, okay. You don't hear anything. Cool. Great. <laughs> Roll your damage. That would be nice. That would have been a nice shot. Yeah. Uh, I showed that air what was up. I let it know who's in charge. All right. Cool. But now I'm on a bear. So, I mean, come on. That's something to write home to the kids about. All right. Let's see. Uh, it's wyvern time. <laughs> Don't don't say it like that. <laughs> Calm it down, so MC using, Hammer. It's okay. It's using its perception to try to detect where y'all are as well. It's oh yeah. Oh my totally. god. And Kara, <laughs> what? You feel this massive beast just slam into your side, all claws and fangs and and uh, snap snapping tail. So let's see, uh, it flies over to you and then it slams into you with its body, slashing at you with its bite. Hitting you, dealing 14 piercing damage. All right, I'm fine. You are fine, that's, that's actually amazing. Bears are OP. And then it stabs its stinger in your direction. No, not the stinger! Oh shit, it missed you. Uh -huh. With a nine, its stinger flies over your uh, shoulder. And Kara, by the way, make sure that you're uh, deducting HP from your bear. Rather yep, than I did. <laughs> um, it's that oh, goddamn wait. stinger you gotta worry about. Yeah, my max, my bear's HP is 34, so I'm at 20. We're fighting above our level, guys. We're supposed to die. All right, Maybe and Kara, it's your turn. Uh, so it's right next to me, right? Yeah, it's right next to you. You can actually see it since it's- All right, a, yeah, a let's, uh, let's uh, attack it, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. Let's attack it as a bear. Use them bear attacks. Um, let's see, how do I roll? Here. Uh, brown bear uh, is a bite. Uh, you have a multi-attack, one with bite, one with claws. Both are 1d20 plus five. Consume its flesh. A 19 hits, and that's 1d8 plus 4 piercing damage. Get him. Get him. 11. Ooh. Nice. You sink your bear like teeth into its shoulder, savaging nice. it. And then you can rake your claws against its hide. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> but it, it gets turned aside by the pebbly nature of its, of its flesh. Oh, it's so, so still alive. Can I like put this in your journal? Yes, can be edited and controlled by Brit. Okay, uh, Brit, I put the brown bear in your journal, and if you cl like double click on it, I think you can bring up the character sheet and actually click these buttons to be like, I'm making a claw attack. I'm making. A oh, bite. okay, cool. Cool. So convenient oh. druid operations here. Awesome. Aya, mm. you've got Ankara wrestling with this wyvern that's right next to you. There's like these two mm -hmm. massive creatures, just like claw and fang tumbling over each other. What do you do? It's right next to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cast Hex on it. Oh. And then, oh God, I really hope this, I really hope this works. Um, I'm going to use Dissonant Whispers cool. and really hope that it does not have the greatest sort of like, because I think that's, wait, is that a wisdom saving throw? Yeah. I believe it is. Yeah. Okay. I doubt this thing is wise. So, um, you know, I take out my golden skull, you know, the candle on top is extinguished now. And um, I quickly cast a hex doing like very Dr. Strange-esque motions. And then I like the wait, eyes wait, wait, of the wait. skull glow. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Is hex a level one spell? <sighs> I can only use one or the other, huh? Yes. Even though it's a bonus action? Yeah, so you can only uh, cast one uh, spell slot spell. That's my prefer. first time playing yeah. a spellcaster. In that case, I'll just do Dissonant Whispers. Fair. Okay. Okay. So, all right, here we go. All right. So you do deal 12 psychic damage. It's got this DC 13 wisdom saving throw. Wow, that's all from 3d6? Wow, you still rolled pretty well. You rolled mm -hmm. a 6, a 1, and a 5. So mm -hmm. on average, above average damage. Okay, cool. Um, and then it makes a wisdom saving throw or half damage and then it doesn't have to run. So let's see about that. It's DC 13, it fails. So it takes the full damage. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then it goes running away from you. Um, 
let's see immediately that'll give i think sarah a chance to use its reaction to move its speed as far as it can away from you okay yeah so uh it it starts running away and Kara and Aya, both of you. You can make an attack, attack of opportunity. Make an opportunity attack. Yeah, because this is actually it, 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 it making its own movement. It's not like a forced movement. Like a can I way. can what I get is, one too? Because I'm on, yeah, top, he's on of... top of. Me. <laughs> yes, you are on top of the bear. Uh, and yes, you can. Uh, and these are all melee attacks. So, yes. Yeah. What what are you using, in Kara? Oh, wait, I was going to try to just claw, claw at him while he... Cool, go ahead and roll away. your claw damage. 1d8 plus 4. And by the way, my dissonant whispers uh, sound like the beating of a thousand drums. Terrifying. How did That's... you count to a thousand? Hmm? How did you count all a thousand drums? Because I, I specifically asked, you know, I was like, what does it sound hey, like in a thousand cultures? 800 drums, drums, thousands, is there a difference in sound? There is, yeah. Oh, it, yeah. Oh, is yeah, there, you can tell. Big difference? difference. Big difference. Well, if there were 800, it wouldn't really be a whisper, now would it? It would be more yeah. like a susurrus. Yeah. A thousand yeah. doesn't become a whisper, I don't think. It's not a dissonant susurrus. Yeah. All right, Jesse, I'll tell you what, damn it. I'm going to play 800 drums for you some point. I want you to tell me. <laughs> um, Jesse, I think you get your sneak attack on this. Yo! Because once per turn, you can apply your sneak attack damage. You didn't get to apply your sneak attack damage yet this turn. And yeah. So you deal four damage plus six, <laughs> 10 damage. Not bad. Yeah, and run away. I, run away. Okay. Run away. I'm going to whack it with my sickle cane. So which cool. once again, it's that Bloodborne-esque cane. So you see me like crack it and like use it almost like in the whip-like fashion. Yo, nice. that... Kane is the best part of that game, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. For four slashing damage. See, Every now little... we're now we're cooking with gas because yeah, yeah. we've we've ch if only Armrust was alive, I he know. could beat the shit out of this thing. <laughs> Sorry, you're on the back of a bear. Yeah, I want to take. This thing a has moved away from you, um, and also you can't see it. <laughs> but it moved. It moved in a certain direction, right? It did move in a certain direction. Yeah, 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 I want to. I want to do a perception to see if that's still in like that direction. I want to Sounds fire good. off, and it's like. Actually, what you way. should do is lock eyes with you know whichever one of the girls you kind of choose, and then say, and then wink, and then shoot. That's <laughs> that's what Orlando <laughs> would have done. Honestly. Yeah, but like. Orlando... That's how to hit. That's how to roll natural twenties. <laughs> Watch, I'll show you. Yeah, but I can roll a natural twenty and still miss if it's not there. I don't want to. <laughs> If there's anything that I would do, it'd be I'd wink, fire, and then nothing would happen, and that's way worse. I want to actually win. It'd be, it'd be like doing... somersaulting into a room of javelin chuckers and then just getting hit. Yeah, through. I don't want to get killed again. Oh god. Oh yeah, roll a three uh, d six plus five. Oh my god. Plus five, huh? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Roll your attack. Yeah, uh unfortunately a twelve doesn't hit, so you don't you don't do anything. Uh did did I detect it in the right place? You have no idea. God Sounds like I should drop this fog cloud. <laughs> is it a concentration spell? Yeah. It is. Oh, actually you need to take wait, 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 wait. You need what? to roll a um Well that would change everything if the fog cloud. You need to roll a concentration saving throw. So it's oh. a constitution saving throw of 10 plus 14. So it's 24, <laughs> I think. Let me let me double check. Good God. That's an incredible roll. It's ah. fine, guys. <laughs> I got it. It's fine. 203 to 204. He didn't even hit me that hard. I need to learn all my concentration spell rules in animal form and all that stuff. Taking damage, the DC equals 10 or half the damage you take, whichever number is higher. So the DC of this is 10. Huh. Jesus Christ. You're fine. Okay. All right, awesome. Um, yeah, so- um, I think you should hold, I think you should have held your attack and had Head and Kara charge forward. Let's see. Bear cavalry style. Mm. 
Yeah, he thinks that you're still where you were before. So he moves back to where he was before and you are still where you were before. So then he uh, claws at you and then sting. Cool. Claw, sting. God, he still didn't hit you with that stinger, unfortunately. Nice. So nice. you only take nine slashing damage instead of nine plus ridiculous. Yeah, go bear. Go bear. Go bear. Stop yeah. bears. And Kara. Stop bears. Stop bears. Stop bears. Stop bears. Stop bears. Please make a constitution saving throw. Uh, DC 10. Good lord. By the skin uh, of your bare teeth. And then and then he goes flying away over here. Okay. So, uh, okay. Actually, he wouldn't be able to. He spent all of his movement moving away from Aya, which means he had to spend all of his movement moving back. So he's stuck there. Mm. Okay, cool. Okay. You maintain so, the fog cloud. Okay, uh, Ankara, your turn. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and attack him. Is she a fog machine or is there just a cloud? <laughs> it's just coming oh, out the bear's butt. Like, like in my head, game, <laughs> just fucking vaping fart cloud. You know, I, I think that, yeah, like there is fog just like rolling out of her bear sleeves right now. Her, her bear sleeves? Oh, no! Okay, so you miss on your bite. Go ahead and roll your claws. Come on, claws. Come on, claws. Ah, the Santa dirty claws, dirty. Santa claws. Nice. Roll claw damage. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. I wanted to say Hercules, Hercules, but it didn't seem like it fit. Hey, Hercules. That's Santa brilliant. claws, Santa claws. <laughs> claws nice. Up. 10 damage, you know. You're doing a little bit to this thing. Aya, uh, it's your turn. He's right next to you. Oh gosh, I have one spell slot left. I could try to whack it with another dissonant whispers. Do it, he says from the grave. <laughs> the ghost okay. of Armoros. This is my last. This is my last spell slot. Um, do this. Yeah, let's do it. So, uh, channeling all of her energy one more time, calling upon my patron for help. Um, mm -hmm. I once again unleash the the chanting and thrumming of a thousand drums upon this drums. motherfucker. <laughs> Santa Claus, awesome. Santa Claus. He makes a wisdom saving throw and fails, taking eleven damage. Oh my god! And then running away. Oh, Dude, attack of opportunity! If I actually get one shot and then you guys just kill it anyways. Yeah, there's three attacks of opportunity now. So Ankara, Sarek, and Aya, please roll. Can I use my sneak attack as well? Can I just say, in Kara's or... brown bear picture is my favorite so far, by the way. I did the other um, Yes, Sarek, because you didn't hit last time, which means you weren't able to use sneak attack this no. turn. So, 11 yeah. damage. Do your other attack, good. Right? That's good. Britt has averaged like 10 damage on every. Sneak I know. I'm so right. proud. Actually, this bear is ridiculous. So proud. You missed that. Time. I got a claw in. Um, so you can't, you don't get a multi-attack on an oh. attack of opportunity, oh, so right. you, you only got your bite. We'll choose the 11 damage one then, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds good. Okay. Take a chunk out of his butt while he's running. Yeah. yeah. So, oh! All right. <laughs> Jesse, <Your horns. laughs> let's remember that you also double your sneak attack dice. So roll 2d6, not 1d6. 2d6. You rolled a fat 18 damage. Get him out of here. We want this tier. Are we actually going to kill this thing, guys? We want this tier. In shock. We're Runs. doing this. So Aya, to, yeah. it's your turn. Mm -hmm. I once again crack my, you know, little sickle cane and just try to, like, lash out at it. Mm -hmm. How much damage did it take? A 13 <sighs> hits. It hits? It hits? Yeah. Yes. Four. <laughs> it's hide is not very strong. All right, Aya, you, you really had ch the chance to end this fight here, but you did oh my not. God. I'm sorry. That yeah. close to death? All right, oh, like, Sark. 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 Sark, shoot it. It's in front of us, yes? Like, we know where it's at, right? You know it ran away, but you're in the middle of a fog cloud, buddy. God damn this fog Roll cloud. your perception. Yeah, all right, perception. Let's do this. Come on, <laughs> perception. Don't Fresh screw me. No! no! Nice! Where is it? Yes! <laughs> Look at Jesse's last two rolls are perfect 20s. All right, Jesse. I'm rolling 4d6 and dropping the lowest. Shoot this, Wyvern. Shoot. Actually, this no, it's, it's just got to be straight 3d6. He critted, Steve. Is that so? Yeah, uh, Jesse, roll 3d6. 
Is that advantage enough, Steven, with the crit? Perfect one. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. What what does a six translate to? <laughs> you tell me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just <laughs> You're just standing on my back. Yeah. This translates to minus two. Okay. Uh yeah, you know what? Um so the way that this is working, right, chat, is that I'm rolling 3d6, which gives us a number along the curve that ability scores fall on. And then I'm comparing the result of that number to what the <laughs> modifier would be. So a six is a minus two modifier to determine how many squares away the player thinks the creature is from its actual location. So I think it's so behind me, is what you're saying? Jesse would think that this creature is actually two squares away from where it actually is, but because he crit, I'm giving him a minus one to his penalty. So he thinks it's one square away. A wyvern is large, which means, Jesse, that depending on the roll of your shot, you might hit. I, roll a 20. I turn, I turn back to Aya and wink. There it is. And there fire it is. off. <laughs> oh, my God. I <laughs> actually did it. <laughs> That's what amazing. are these fucking rolls, Jesse? <laughs> I'm not with okay. the wink. Are you, you kidding me? Straight to theaters. In a row. Straight to theaters with this one. Oh he fucking pulls his bow out, reverse grips it, shoots it off the back wall. <laughs> wink. I'm yeah. on a bear. On a bear. On a bear. <laughs> on a bear. Get at me. <laughs> oh my god, that roll. It's just dead, right? Seeing there's like no amount of damage that doesn't die, I guess. <laughs> there, you are correct, Jeff. It has yes! two hit points. There is no amount of damage that will not kill it. So you guys you fucking kill damage. this. Yeah, I dropped that fog cloud. So, <sighs> Chad, I'm, I'm imagining there's like this this sphere of fog boiling on the surface of this. Of this Holy field. shit. Yes, Wyvern is flying away, just like beating its wings in terror. It's like bleeding from like numerous bites and claws across its chest. It it like shakes its head and you see like its eyes sort of like pupils dilate and then turn back into slits. And then it like turns around, banks back, diving for the center of the cloud of fog when an arrow, a single arrow, comes arcing gracefully up out of the fog, sinking directly into its eye. And then this wyvern <coughs> just crash lands directly. Goddamn bard of river, river town, the lake people or whatever over here. Guys, yep. we couldn't fight rats, but we got this wyvern. <laughs> Three crits. And to be fair, Britt, you couldn't fight rats, but you guys <laughs> killed this I'm with me getting one, one shot to start the entire fight. Like I didn't even get the swing. My God. I'm proud of all of you. I'm Holy amazed it worked. All this right. is like circus style fighting. Uh, the other backstory to this is that Armoros has a severe existential crisis about his identity in the group now. And uh... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing we do. We go help Armoros up. Oh my God. No, I'm dead. Oh, uh, so be, because it's the sunfall cycle, you can spend 10 minutes recovering Armoros from death. Yeah. Armoros, okay. you That's take okay. one level of exhaustion, which means that you're at a disadvantage on ability checks. I wake up but and I'm like, fine. we need to get out of here. That thing's dangerous. It's dead. <laughs> what? We killed it. I'm not, I'm still a bear. I can't say that. But I just pointed out it with my bear claw. Now's not the time to joke, you guys. We really have to get out of here. That thing is Seriously, down. it's dead. Look. I slide down the back of the bear like... Uh, Legolas, like, zoop. <laughs> we did it. We've killed it. I kind of look at it and I look at Sarah, kind of go, It's amazing what can be accomplished when you're not running from a battle, isn't it? I couldn't even see. <laughs> Sick. Mm -hmm. I just kind of limp around. Let's see what it dropped. <laughs> and you, see, you notice that, like, Aya is kind of like pale and like covered a little bit in like a thin veil of like sweat. I kind of like shamble over. Now I'm using like my little sword cane as like an actual cane to go see, like, the inspect the body of this foul beast. Oh, let's see. I'll help with. While she's doing that, by the way, uh, Armos yeah. kind of like interviews the group because he's really interested in what tactics and stuff was used to kill him. He's, that's all he thinks about, really. I go like this. Ah. Bear form is good. He's like writing out <laughs> notes. He's like bear form good. <laughs> Sound of eight hundred and sixty-two drums, very good ability. Okay. Yep. Sarek apparently only okay. Very good with arrow. Okay. All right. Upon slaying this wyvern, you receive twenty gold pieces, which is five gold pieces each. Nice. Okay. 
Did it not have a, a tear on it? I thought it had a it tear. Did not. There was no tear. Well, it, we didn't even have to. We made the fog, so we didn't have to walk through. Like we tried to make it a boss fight, but I think it was just a fight. <laughs> yeah, it's just a normal uh, fight. Well, also you you notice that uh, its body has not disappeared. Oh, yeah. so, this thing was alive. It's still evil, so yeah. Wait. Screw it. Oh, the other guy's bodies did disappear. Well, mm -hmm. no, no. So we knew that Blood Knight dissolved but what happens to the black eyed guys when we kill them black eyed guys do not disappear so this so guy's gonna fucking respawn we need to go right. find a brazier past this thing we're not doing this again yeah yeah <laughs> Agreed. But, but i feel like we should head over to the stairs going down that lead to the ramparts to the to the side of the actual that road so we can get up to those damn statues because statues when we change the environment the environment stays changed I'm going to use my hit dice against yeah. Steven, by the way, okay? Yeah, totally. Uh, Y'all can take a short rest. I get 10 more, so I'm at 11. If anyone can heal me more, he goes Oh, around. I recover my spells uh, on yeah, a short rest. Just, um, mm -hmm. You recover your Are spells you kidding on a short me, game? rest. Come on. I'm going to try it again. Let's see. I'll turn back into myself and... Uh, Jesse healed three Steven, hit or, uh, Jesse, you used up all your dice earlier, man. I'm sorry. I had two. <laughs> I had two hit dice. No, no, I'm no. saying you used up all your dice rolling 20s. Oh, I oh, I thought you were like me, like, come on. Uh, no, this is a technicality. No, all right. I'm yeah. also, while we're resting, going to swap out my hell or my dissonant whispers for hellish rebuke because I feel like that'll be more useful now that we're not fighting it. A... All right. Well, uh, I think you don't prepare spells, Bronze. I think you, you can just cast whichever ones you want from your list. Really? Yeah. You don't have to, like, oh, say, okay. but you regain both of your spell slots now that you've had a short rest. So Okay. Uh, Jeff, I this... have healing word on you. Oh, thank you. One d four plus your, yeah. So I think you got to roll the the dice. Oh, is it me or him, Steven? It's you, Britt. Uh, oh, then it's one d four plus three. Oh, okay. Seven. I pull out a long gold cigarette filter, hand roll, and smoke that a dragon cigarette, and then. Thank you. Sorry. Smoke. That's okay. <laughs> well, while we tend to our wounds. What is nice. um, what is in this like besides the dragon? Was there anything that the dragon had on it in it? Yeah, so uh back against the the far wall over that away, like looking down inwards towards the palace <laughs> you, can, you can see the tip of the the flagpole off, you know, 300 feet down that away. Uh at that edge um, there's like a, a, a pile of refuse and, and like a nest that this wyvern has made. Um, and in that nest, there's a body. Oh, please is it don't. Our it's dude? the guy that escaped. I bet it's our dude. Yeah, we check out the body. See yeah, let's go look. Yeah. Go look at the body and let me see if I can describe for you what this looks like. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> yes um it's a woman oh. um she's lying face down and when you when you like grip her shoulders and turn her over she's um she's wearing a bronze cherub mask she's wearing white armor with gold studs white leather armor studded leather um and she has two bone white scimitars strapped at her hips she's dead you said She's dead. That's another one of the baby masks. Anybody else want to join me in the creepy? Is it a happy baby or a sad baby? What's this baby? Sad baby. Another sad baby? Sad baby. Does anyone want the sad baby? And Carl should wear it probably. Yeah, I'll wear it. And then you should try out the scimitar. Sarek, don't you use one? I have a rapier. Same thing, right? No, not at all. I know, that was a joke. Okay. <laughs> does she have anything else on her person uh well how does it does it function the same as like a long sword is it similar um similar? scimitar let's see if it's similar i can use it i suppose a scimitar is a martial melee weapon deals 1d6 slashing damage and it is a finesse weapon and it is also light what does finesse so mean? The difference between a long sword, long sword deals 1d8 damage, 
also slashing. A rapier is finesse, but is not light. And so like a scimitar could be used as an offhand weapon for a two weapon fighting style. Is that what finesse basically equates to? Is you just finesse means you can use your dexterity bonus instead of your strength bonus. That's it. What does the sad baby mask do again? Well, Jeff's sad baby mask uh, came from the Blood Knight, and that one allows him to heal and retain right. uh, additional hit points as temporary hit points. What does mine do? Just look like a sad baby? Well, you haven't identified it yet. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to take these back to the oh, yeah. balloon. Okay. I'll hold on to the swords. We can probably sell them. We should take the armor. Actually, yeah, I was going to say, the armor, can, can you tell me the difference between the studded leather armor that she has and the leather armor that I have? Well, that hers is white with gold studs on it, and yours is boring and shitty looking. No, yeah, uh, that's why I want yeah. it. <laughs> Tell them how you really feel, Stephen. Let's see. Um, studded leather armor is different from leather armor, if I can flip to the page. <laughs> studded leather armor is 12 plus your dexterity modifier, as opposed to leather armor, which is 11 plus your dexterity modifier. I want yep. that studded. Yeah, I strip her ass and take that. Cool. The good thing you have such a small girlish figure. <laughs> thank, thank you. He like mm -hmm. sort of put past himself. Like you're right, I do. <laughs> <sighs> do you think they were related or a part of the same order? It's interesting though that she died, but her body also did not dissolve. Yet she seems equipped, similar to the blood guy. Yeah. Perhaps it has to do with the strange fog or the, I don't, corruption? I don't know. Did you guys ever give a body to the blood ooze people? No. No, we killed the blood ooze. But if we go back, we would have to fight the wyvern again, and I recommend we don't do that. Yes, no, I, uh, we definitely should head towards the, uh, we must, we must. Go look at the statues. We must. Didn't... I'm going to open her eyelids too, Stephen. Are they black or anything? Like I, I open her eyes. Nope. Normal eyes. Normal eyes. I'm going to give her a kiss and revive her, I suppose, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> it's very romantic. There are birds swirling around above you, mm -hmm. singing a bird song. Um, she, doesn't, she doesn't revive. Yeah. Movies have lied to me. Um, okay. When that other dude stabbed himself with the fang of Dahaka, tentacles came out. Wonder if we stab her, if tentacles will come I prefer out. Prefer that you don't experiment that way. Okay. Stab the dead body. We've already tried kissing it. We took all of its clothes. Um, I didn't. Well, in the name of science, Ankara, sometimes people do unpleasant things. I think this conversation uh, will go on for a while. But we should probably proceed and find a breezer. I think we should go. Uh, yes, I agree. Cool. All right. Um, I've drawn where the wall tops are, um, sort of off the edge, the back edge of this this building. So here on the left and the right, there are wall tops. And on the wall tops, you see statues. Yep. On the wall tops, you see statues. Now, the wall tops are actually about 20 feet below. Um, it, where are you all at the moment? Where, where the nest is, I think. We're just out of view of the statues and in perfect position to see the lever that shuts them off, Stephen. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you asked that question, though. <laughs> cool. And Kara, are you still a bear? Uh, no. No, I changed okay. back so I could heal Armoros. Yeah, right. Got it. Okay, awesome. Yes, so you can see down below you, there is this street far below, you know, 60 feet down. Um, the center of it has a small strip of gutter running down the center. There's just like refuse and trash all over the street. There's like broken tables and wagon <sighs> beds and wagon wheels and chairs and shit just like littering the road. There's javelins sticking up out of the uh, out of out of the surface. There's like a rat that pops up out of the grating and then like ducks down under it before a javelin comes flying down. Um, Etc. And of course, on on the tops of each of these walls, there's four um, statues on each wall, uh, and that's what you can see. You don't see any stairs or ladders heading <coughs> from this area down to the walls below. Um, also, I, I should make note: the walls continue around the palace compound. So you've also got oh, roll twenty. Why are you so finicky? 
You've also got walls <coughs> here on each side. And here, there are stairs. Oh my goodness. Roll 20. Why dost thou, <coughs> why dost thou treat me as thus? Cool. So there's one on this side and one on the other side at the same spot. You can imagine it's there because roll 20 is challenging. Um, and there are stairs leading down. And uh, if you look east and west, you can see um, small guard post towers, probably, you know, 100 or 150 feet in either direction along the walls. Um, since it's about time for us to end, I can also tell you that sort of like from up here, you can see off to the north, you see this little encampment placed around this flagpole with the pennant uh, waving from it. Uh, off to the northeast, over in this general direction, um, you see a city, basically, like a small village town city in the side of the palace compound. And off over this way to the northwest, you see a forest. In the center, in, in the palace. far above, uh, the first thing that you see is this flagpole with this small encampment sprung up around it. And then beyond it, you see what clearly looks like a promenade, um, like a palace grounds leading up to the front entrance to King Astaphon's royal palace. And with that, I think that's going to do it for this evening. So let's go back to Jesse and let him take us away. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know. Things happen today. Beautiful, amazing things. And uh, a boy became a man. A bear became a mother. And and uh, bronze became an old man. I don't know what happened. You became old? <laughs> and, and then, uh, you know, Jeff learned the value of trusting in the half-elves. They get it. Half-elves, we get it done. Is, is I'm a full I, elf. You're a half elf. Yeah, That's which is why. Bish. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, uh, God, I don't even know what's going to happen next week, but I'm really excited. Uh, let's go around and uh, everyone can do their shout outs and tell us where to find them this week and what's going on in their lives. Um, we'll go the Ankara route. Britt, what's going on with you? Uh, I'm still Britt Wiseman. <laughs> Stop that. On Twitter. stop that. I'm never going to stop now. It's going to be every <laughs> single time. Yes. Uh, I'm hosting Twitch Weekly this week on Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific. If you want to watch on slash Twitch, we basically just give you a roundup of everything fun and cool going on on Twitch this week. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. I'm really proud of myself for casting a fog lab and turning into a bear. I feel like I really came back from that uh, rat devouring situation. Uh, so yeah, everyone have a good weekend. I'll see you next uh, next week. <laughs> okay, uh, Stephen, what's going on with you? Awesome. I'm Steven. You can find me at Silent Osiris. The O is a zero on the internet. This is basically the only thing I'm doing on the internet these days. But you know, every once in a while, I tweet about video games like Pokemans and or Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, if you like D&D &D and you're into that sort of thing, I tweeted um, a set of alternate variant rules for inspiration, one of which is the one that we're using in this show. So if you're into that, you can definitely go check that out on Twitter. Um, this is hilarious and awesome. And thank you guys so much for being such amazing players. Um, Bronze, you're going to be absent next week, right? We're going to yes. bring back Kairos to replace you next week. Mm -hmm. And that's planned so that everybody knows. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll pass it over to you now, Bronze. Take it away. Yeah. Good luck without me. <laughs> Here, majority melee group. <laughs> Uh, no eldritch blasts, no deep speech or dissonant whispers. You will have sad, no boring 1, existences. Drums. Uh, just kidding. Uh, you're all wonderful. And uh, Jesse's MVP because he rolled three 20s in a row, which my brain is still exploding from the fact that that actually even fucking happened. Also, I what think this is the first time I learned how to play a spell user ever in 5th edition because I was like, wait, this doesn't look like a wise creature. Maybe I should use this spell <laughs> as wisdom saving throws. <laughs> this was fun. Um, 
but yes, th thank you so much, everybody. I'm that bronze girl. You can find me here. On, I'm a full time Twitch broadcaster and uh, I'm on a lot of RPGs around the Internet. I'm actually starting my first RPG on my channel very soon, Nice, which I'm super excited for. So it's the moonfall yeah. cycle, right? Yeah, the moonfall <laughs> cycle. Yep. It's going to be really good. Nobody's ever going to die. No, nope. it's going to be entirely well You're actually played. immortals and you're preventing adventurers from entering your town. And every time they come in and kill you, you respawn and make their lives hell. And um, <laughs> you get to actually stand on walls and throw javelins at them and automatically hit. You don't even have to roll to see if they hit or not. You just automatically hit. And you, one of the classes you can play is a wyvern with that does mm. 500 poison damage. It's pretty great. <laughs> Sounds pretty dope. Mm -hmm. I'd like to play that game. <laughs> Jeff, what's going on with you, dude? Hey, everybody. Um, I was gone away in Germany last week, so thank you for your patience. And I'm excited to see what all this totem pole and Kyra, he's got all these nicknames and stuff. So that's going to be fun to check him out. We'll miss Bronze World, of course, next week. Um, thank you all. I, this episode, I muttered three words, walked into a room, got one shot, and then sat there. And Poor thing. The whole, the, I, the whole experience, I was like, you know what? This is what I was missing. This is what I needed in my life. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. It was made up by the incredible teamwork and awesome. I, I was like, we're, I was like, Steven's teaching us a lesson. We're fighting above our level when, when the fucking tail hit. But then at plus seven versus armor 11, it missed twice. Excuse me. Uh, the dice rolls are ridiculous, but that's I like it. I like when the DM gets fucked a little bit. Just just a, just a little bit when the dice rolls. Um, please do uh, all of Jesse's followers. Make sure and follow me. Think of me as like a like Jesse Plus. You know, like a Jesse's Jesse's the the he's the domestic brand. He's he's the Budweiser. Like you want that international shit. That's what I am. Okay, so deluxe edition. That's right. Game. Like yeah. Jesse will be like, this game's good or whatever. Then like post a cartoon, but I'll, I'll tell you why the game's good. Post like a real CGI picture or something like that. You know yeah. Uh, you mean like a, a, a real life remake of the cartoon? Yeah. Yeah. You can think about Jesse's 1994 Lion King. Good. <laughs> Nobody's complaining, but I am, <laughs> I am the ethnic CGI version that just enhances it. brings real world issues to play. Okay. There's going to yeah. be a scene where there's a caravan, you know, it's coming. <laughs> Still voiced by okay. James Earl Jones. Of course. Uh, <laughs> that's the best way I could describe it. So, you know, just give me that Twitter follow. And uh... <laughs> I, hope you you pitch, I hope you pitch yourself that way in any situation you're in. For always. Twitter yeah. Well, I'm always yep. selling myself. That's yep. the other thing here, too. I'm uh... the ethnic CGI version. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, Jeff's the ethnic CGI version of me too. Right. When you look at me, when you look at me, you think of me as you know that I, I'm. I'm like, is what I that's mean. the only reason I follow you, so that people can't say that I'm racist. That's right. That's, that's true. true. I'm a I mean, earlier in my stream today, I, I I called Steven exotic. I said to me, Steven looks like yeah. such an exotic European man, like that's when your hair is pulled back in a bun with a big beard. I was like, like, it's really objectifying word. Oh, like, oh, like, oh, yeah, like oh, an exotic oh, man. Oh my god! Go. This is what where I come from. This is what we imagine Europeans to look like, you know. And then look, drinking out of a jar. Yeah, mason <laughs> jar. Oh my god! Such an Jesse, exotic man. Jesse you know? is is Matt Damon as Jason Bourne. Safe, reliable, original. Okay, I'm Hawk. I'm Hawkeye as as uh, Jason Bourne. As New, Jason. <laughs> unique. Okay, just a different take on it. Ultimately, it is two white guys, but at the same time, is it two white guys? You know what I'm saying? So I'll, just, I'll leave you with that. I'll leave you that deep thought for the week. All right. Wonderful. I'm so glad we, we did that. Um, <laughs> hey, everyone this week, don't worry about what I'm doing. This week, you have two assignments. One, follow Jeff on Twitter. Two, <laughs> two after you follow Jeff on Twitter, come back to this Twitch channel. Yeah. Get the, uh, like, just make a clip. You might have to download this to make it happen. But uh, get the start of the fight where Jeff is instantly killed. <laughs> then then clip in the part where he says, guys, just die. We're, this is over our level. We shouldn't be here. And then clip in the 320s. And then just send it to him. Just tweet it at him. 
So you know some he gets the, it. Some yeah. of the best reinforcement you can get is negative reinforcement. Honestly, it's a catalyst for action for some people. Yeah, you know? yeah. I don't just want to take all the credit, but it, it it's up there. Yeah, just everyone do that. That's your assignment this week. Don't worry about what I'm doing. You all do that, and I'll be happy. I'll be ha I'll like every single one of those. The more you do, oh, I'll like cool. them. I'll like, and you know what? I'm gonna retweet them too. Every single one. The more <laughs> you get, the better. I want everyone to do that. Anyway, that's it for us. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back next week with another episode. And uh, until then, don't get eaten by rats. That shit sucks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. You know, where's the payoff? Bring the strippers and boots. We do occasionally talk about video games. Bring the strippers and boots. Out of that time of video games. Bring the strippers and boots. Oh, thank God. I don't need pants now. Hey, JC. What are you doing? Not much. Making a fortune. It's a professional broadcast. Yeah, now sing the music. It's a professional broadcast. Bring the strippers and boots. It's a professional broadcast. Now here's to ask and answer one simple question. It's a professional broadcast. You. <laughs> <laughs>